The Department of Homeland Security today raided the home of P. Diddy, resulting in a Twitter trend, The Diddler. Batman's greatest arch nemesis, The Diddler, of course. And uh, I love this. I love X. It's I just it's a great website. It's awful. It's brilliant all at the same time. But yes, The Diddler. <laughs> so the allegations are that P. Diddy was involved in some serious sex trafficking. And so we'll, we'll get into that story. There's a rumor going around right now. Someone's posted a flight log of a private jet leaving Los Angeles and heading to Cape Verde, which they claim has no extradition treaty. I don't know that's true. It's got over, I believe it's got like a million hits on Twitter. It's going viral. So we'll address that. And, and I want to make sure we address the grain of salt. We don't know for sure if this, uh, this is Diddy's jet or what's going on. And other news, other news, other nudes. Donald Trump has uh, some pretty good uh, news coming for him. His bond was reduced to 100 and I believe it was 175 million. He's got 10 extra days to come up with the money, but that doesn't really matter now because Dwack or DWAC, as Fox News likes to call it, has just shot up 35 percent, making Trump now in the top 500 wealthiest people in the world, adding about four billion dollars to his net worth. So, uh, oh, boy. And then, of course, uh, I'm in the news, actually, because a couple days ago, I had this passive comment that I didn't think was that big of a deal. There was an article about this woman who was on The Sopranos, how she said she makes more money on OnlyFans than she did when she was on The Sopranos. And I said, women choosing to be hookers instead of having jobs is an arc I didn't expect feminism to take. I did not. I, I didn't mean it as an insult. I thought that was a plainly like a kind of bland statement like wow like here we go like women are choosing to be hookers instead well apparently she took it as an insult a bunch of other women are insulted by the term hooker or whatever which i didn't realize was offensive i just thought it was a descriptive term of what they were doing i just whatever i guess but uh, now they, they're writing about me and uh i'll take it though daily mail says i am one of the most successful conservative commentators and I said, calling me a conservative is an insult to conservatives. So we'll talk about that, that stuff, too. Before we get started, my friends, head over to castbrew.com and buy coffee. We got Alex Stein's primetime grind. We got the limited edition re-rise with Roberto Jr. Once that's gone, it's gone forever. So grab it if you'd like to try it. That is a medium roast. And everyone's favorite Appalachian Nights, they've become addicted. They can buy no other than Appalachian Nights. Anybody who tastes it stops buying everything else. I'm not kidding. We're like, we used to sell way more rise with Roberto Jr., then uh, people were like, yeah, I'll try the Appalachian Nights. And then they just shifted their entire order into just massive amounts of this. We sell it like crazy. I'm glad we got our one hit wonder. But I do think it would be great if people purchase some of our other coffee. Support the show. Buy the coffee. We got K-Cups. We got Ground. We got Whole Bean. Also, don't forget to become a member by going to TimCast.com and clicking Join Us. So you can join the Discord. When you become a member, you get, you get access to the Discord server. That means all the instructions are there. You click Join Us on TimCast.com. You sign up for 10 bucks a month. Then you click Discord. It'll show you all the instructions. It's, it's an app where you're in a chat room 24-7 with a bunch of like-minded individuals, and that keeps the conversation going, and it, it networks and it builds community. That's the best thing you can do. But as a member, you'll get access to our uncensored members-only shows Monday through Thursday. You don't want to miss them. They're fun. They're funny. Not family-friendly. And as a member, you can actually submit questions and even call in to talk to us and our guests. So I really do recommend it because this show is made possible, thanks in part, to members like you. Smash that like button, subscribe to this channel, share the show everywhere on the internet right now. Click that share button. Joining us tonight to talk about this and a whole lot more is Tom Fitton. Good to be with you all again. Thanks for having me. Absolutely. Who are you, sir? I am president of Judicial Watch, America's largest and most effective government watchdog group. Right on. A lot of great legal victories, a lot of great legal insights, but uh, especially with uh, what's going on with Trump's uh, bond hearing and stuff, I think you'll have some uh, some good legal uh Legal insights for us, so thanks for hanging out. You should be You're fun. welcome. Thanks for having me. Hannah Claire is here. Hey, I'm Hannah Claire Brimlow. I'm a writer for scnr.com. Uh, the first time you were here, I asked you uh, what case you're working on. You said, I don't know, we're suing everybody. And I always felt like <laughs> that was a good true. description. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but I'm happy to be here tonight. Phil's here too. Hello, everybody. My name is Phil Labonte. I'm the lead singer of the heavy metal band All That Remains. I'm a very failed musician, anti communist, and a counter revolutionary. Hey, what's up, Serge? Yo, Phil. How you doing, bro? Good. Good. Uh, I am Surge.com. Uh, go vote, people. Don't forget, it's not the victory's on the back. Go vote. I just want to get that message out there as much as possible. Anyways, let's and start. register your friends and family. Like, <laughs> get them to register. Treat it seriously. And uh, uh, the there's a lot of efforts into legal ballot harvesting. I recommend everyone take a look at. It. But let's jump into the big news today. I can't believe we are opening a show talking about P Diddy. SCNR.com reports 
Feds raid three homes owned by Sean Diddy Combs in connection three with a homes. sex trafficking case. Three homes. Producer has been accused of running a criminal racketeering enterprise that included murder, sex trafficking, illegal firearms, and drug trafficking. Mansions in L.A., Miami, and New York were stormed by heavily armed agents in the U.S. Department uh, with the U.S. Department of Homeland Security on March 25th. Uh, Homeland Security investigations confirmed the raids to TMZ and said the agency executed law enforcement actions as part of an ongoing investigation with assistance from HSI Los Angeles, HSI Miami, and our local law enforcement partners. We will provide further information that becomes available. TMZ reported the case is being handled out of the Southern District of New York and is likely tied to sex trafficking allegations against Combs in multiple lawsuits in recent months. Now, I'd love to claim SDNY. It must be political bias. But P. Diddy, of course, is anti-Trump, so must not be it. The music mogul has been fighting multiple legal battles, including from a woman who claims that Combs gang raped her at his New York record recording studio after plying her with drugs and alcohol when she was only 17. That case filed last December was the fourth assault lawsuit against Combs. So what, what I heard is that what they would do is they'd invite artists to studios to record or whatever, slip them something in their drink. Once they got delirious and loopy, they would then film lurid acts with these people, male or female. And then once they came to say, we're going to ruin your life by posting this video unless you do exactly what we tell you from now on. I don't know if that's true. Those are just the rumors that I heard on the Internet. And as you know, if it's on the Internet, it must be true. The the only thing that I would say about that particular rumor is that is a reapplication of uh, the rumors about uh, Epstein. Exactly. It's the same thing as, as use, you know, powerful people using sex as a blackmail tool. So take it for what it's worth. Um, but, you know, I mean, if multiple women are making accusations and stuff, you at least have to look into it. And then when... He jumps on a jet and is like, I'm getting off right. the CODIS. So, so like, <laughs> I don't know how true this is, but it's it's got almost a million views, got thousands of retweets and quote tweets, and, and people are referencing it a lot. This is just uh, some, I don't know who this user is. They've got a couple thousand followers. It's uh, sure they say it's is debt. I don't know what their username is. Private jet owned by Sean P. D. Combs has left the U.S. Combs residents were raided by DHS. We know that the flight path of the plane appears to be headed towards Cape Verde. Cape okay, Verde has no extradition treaty with the U.S. So at the time of posting this, the plane was still in the air. And as of right now, they've they've shared the uh, tracking information. There is a jet. Uh, I don't know. It's just a publicly available website showing a jet landing in what appears to be uh, St. John's. So not Cape Verde, Antigua. Is that, is that, is that, is that how you say it? Antigua? Yeah, Antigua. <laughs> Antigua. Antigua. Do they have an extradition treaty with the U.S.? I, I know. Look it up. I don't know. I don't know about no it. No idea. And I don't even know that that's ac actually his jet. So, you know, no idea exactly what this means. But a lot of people are saying that he was basically doing what Epstein was doing. Yeah. If 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 that is a uh, if that is his jet there, there are a lot of recording studios in the Caribbean and stuff like that. Maybe and he just wants to record an album, says Phil. Well, no, no. The, the point that I'm making is uh, there would be places in in the Caribbean that would be friendly to artists because of there's different types of royalties that you can get when you uh, record outside of the United States. There's a whole line of, of income that's, that's available to artists. If they're, if they record some stuff outside of the United States, you can go and look the information up on, uh, on Google. But so it would make sense for them to have connections in, in places like that and be like, all right, I'm going to go, you know, we're going to go and record or whatever. So just because there's a plane going there that had alleged ties to P. Diddy doesn't mean it is actually him is trying my, to escape the continental my, U.S. My, but it, my does, it just, just looks, just real looks funny, you know? Real, real quick, just as an aside, the diddler is trending. <laughs> <laughs> well, I was, He did that to himself. I was pleasantly surprised to learn that the Homeland Security uh, Department actually does investigate international sex trafficking. We've only had the worst sex trafficking operation in the history of humanity going on uh enabled by president biden and of course the focus is on this uh, hollywood um, musical figure uh i tell you i'm skeptical about everything the feds do so i'm sure there's well, something to be can't. investigated I must agree. but the deployment of resources here seems to be out of the ordinary considering the crisis on the border with sex trafficking in numbers that would shock the conscience of 
any American citizen. There are more federal agents and more guns that went to pick up P. Diddy at his house than are at uh, many of the individual uh, border locations where people go to seek asylum. But how long until the Biden administration is like, look, you can't say we don't take human trafficking and sex crime seriously. We do actually use our forces to take down the bad guys. Like, I, at what I, point do they use this as a sacrificial I, I, I lamb? To, to I hate how much this? sense that makes. It's it's awful, right? I yeah, mean, I think you're totally right. It. If if uh, if we were serious about these types of crimes, we would immediately address the border. But instead, there's sort of this, we'll get a flashy news story going and turn the attention away. I mean, this feels like when uh, the Biden administration is like, hey, did you guys hear about those UFOs that we're going to tell you about now? Every time Hunter Biden gets in trouble. <laughs> yeah, right. yeah, I mean, there, there's a thousand women sex trafficked into Los Angeles, right? And you're in Homeland Security. Oh, well, we don't, that's too, that's too much, hard. That's we too don't much do work. That. P. Diddy. Well, the thing is, what what what's going to give you more bang for your buck? Picking up P. Diddy, it's going to be all over the news. You're going to yeah. look like heroes, blah, blah, blah. Picking up nameless, faceless, trafficked people. I mean... Embarrasses it, the administration. Yeah, it doesn't. You know, here, this is a... Look, you know, between Senator Menendez, even Hunter Biden, I have a little sympathy for. I don't trust any of the prosecutions. Not that they're innocent or guilty or whatever. Yeah. The point is that the feds at this level don't make honest decisions when it comes to pursuing claims against people like P. Diddy to Hunter Biden to Senator Menendez. And obviously Trump is, is the big kahuna in that regard. But uh, you can't trust the DOJ and Homeland Security. They're so compromised uh, when it comes to high high level investigations like this. And I'm not saying did he did anything right or wrong. It's just the, the, don't the, trust don't trust his enemies here. The big question right now I was asking is did did he do it or didn't did he do it? We don't know what did he did do or what did he didn't do. <laughs> I, 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 I stole that, that from South Park. From. That's a South Park joke. Everybody knows it's a South Park joke, but I had to say it. <laughs> Did Diddy do it? But who names themselves Diddy? Like, <laughs> what? Where did this come from? I'm just saying. Maybe this has been an open secret for a long time. He was, in fact, so open that he could make a, a cute nickname out of it. It was Puff Daddy, was, you know, and then it was P Diddy. No, 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 Diddy. no. Sean Puffy Combs. Sean Puffy Combs. Yeah. yeah. He should have stuck with Sean Puffy Combs. That was the most like adult that also gave a a throwback to when he was younger and where he came right. from. It should have like, been Sean Puffy Combs. Yeah. Like Dwayne the Rock Johnson. Right. You know, there was a period where in his movie career it just had The Rock. Yeah. Right. And then they were like Dwayne quote The Rock. Now it's just Dwayne Johnson. Yeah. There you right. go. It's not You're, as cool. That's lame. The Rock. I mean, it's a, that one's a downgrade. Look, in my he's opinion. he is he is in currently playing in or he's. Uh, wrestling in the wwe so that means he's on raw and stuff and he's a heel now and he's awesome i love the i think he's he started great. on wwe i thought yeah yeah so but, he's just he, like circling but, back well the thing, yeah he goes he'll do stuff in movies and he's so busy when he gets to go back to wwe it's a big deal and he doesn't say for a long time he just does one you know a couple little bits one storyline and he's off to do another thing but when he's there he's still awesome in the ring he's still great he still delivers lines like it's nobody's business he's still the greatest most electrifying man in sports entertainment he's great so <laughs> He so is. do you think um, the the man formerly known as uh, Puff D or what was he Puff Daddy? He did he Puff he Daddy, Daddy Combs. I, I'm not I'm not He's cool enough Diddler to know now. this. <laughs> do you think the Diddler a, will make an appearance on WWE? This is the real question. <laughs> no. How do you where, how not, do you bounce not back? because not because specifically not because Vince McMahon is currently under investigation or in a in a, a case oh, yeah, regarding uh, sexual assault and stuff. He's got his own stuff. The last thing he's, so he's doing like, is be like, yo, let's away. get this uh, guy to come on over. Antigua no, he's not doing does have um, extradition. So, it so up. it's not clear he's been detained anywhere. No, I don't even no. know that Jet's actually his. Yeah, everybody's just retweeting it because they want to believe it. But unless we can get hard verification on that tail number being owned by him, I just say like with these big breaking stories. You got to take it with a grain of salt. I mean, he could be, you know, he they could be a raid. There wasn't designed to have him arrested just to gather evidence. So who knows, right? He's still. Well, I mean, I, I got I to gotta agree with you, though, Tom. I don't trust the feds when we have Dr. Phil saying that our tax dollars are funding sex trafficking, that these children are coming across yep. the border from cartels and the feds aren't doing anything about that. In fact, quite the opposite. They're facilitating it. Yep. The only thing the only thing I can assume is this raid is about the competition and not about actually trying to stop him because of a, a sworn moral duty. Yeah, they're like, hey, this is our thing. Get out of here, Sean. <laughs> this is our thing. That's our business, and we will not allow you to participate. So us federal government will shut you down. Maybe. I don't think so, but like, you know. 12 million coming across the border. 
And yeah. this is the focus of Homeland Security. I, I Like I said earlier, I think that this is, I mean, obviously if this isn't a real, you know, if this is, this is. No, it's still there. Uh-oh. Wait, wait, no, it's gone, it's gone. Okay. If they, obviously if they're, if they're, uh, you know, if they have the evidence or they're collecting evidence, they have enough ev evidence to, to, you know, have a warrant and whatever and stuff, but there's no reason to trust the federal government anymore. Like everybody that is your average person or, or anyone that's going to have any dealings with the federal government, they're always going to be thinking is there something that i said or did that has brought this on me or are they or if i obviously you're gonna you're gonna want to have a, a lawyer around before you speak to to the to police or whatever the to the law um but you know like never never talk to them. If yeah you're ever under investigation never, you never have, talk you have to never, have a never talk, certainly not to the federal government yeah. never never so do it without the advice of a lawyer it's the best thing um uh, Diddy could do the diddler could do is uh <laughs> is say the government's trying to frame me and and curry support with people who already are skeptical he's got to go trouble. full maga well, you know what i yeah. mean like there are a lot of people who would who'd be like these are oh, terrible man. crimes i do like want to take this seriously but the federal government is sketchy and so it does seem <laughs> like we well, should you, give you know, the benefit you, of the doubt you kind of raise some interesting questions right so he's gonna i would presume consult a lawyer or two and the lawyers are going to have a kind of, a conser you know, good lawyers are going to have a conservative approach to how to deal with the federal government. But in a case like this, do you throw those rules out the window and go well, with the Trump approach saying, you know, what they're he does. setting me up. This is all just politics or whatever. He's what, whatever argument you use, it's relatively non-legal, but just raises issues about the uh, investigation itself. He's just got to show up at the next Trump rally, get on stage with Trump. Oh, before you know it. And just throw his support behind Trump <laughs> and know that if he does that, when tr if Trump gets elected, Trump will go ahead and just railroad the the the. The whole investigation, let him go, he's fine. He's, that, that, he's, that's his way out. He's recording a real quick track called MAGA 2024. Yep. Totally. That's why that's why he flew to Antigua. He's like, Yeah, we we were put on this new song and then the feds raided us. I, I can't I can't imagine what this is Featuring all about. That, oh, geez. Well, who's a Canadian rapper? Uh Tom McDonald. He'll like an appearance on it and be like, Yeah, yeah. I also like Trump. No, in all seriousness though, if uh if Diddy did try and come out as MAGA, it wouldn't work. Trump supporters would be like, okay, Epstein Jr. Like, nah, not interested. Right. Like, yeah. we're not right. buying it. He's got, there's like video clips of him being like, Trump is bad or something. I don't know what his so, so, politics are. It, uh, speaking of Epstein Jr., so you had these stories come out about Nickelodeon. Oh, so yeah. they had a half a dozen shows that were s sexualizing children for what, a decade? And no one did anything about it over there? Well, I think the I issue. Mean, how did we? How did we all miss that? I guess adults I weren't think watching. Well, no, did. no, no, I no, think no. People talked about this for a long time. Just, I don't. I don't think the shows themselves had overt things. It was behind the scenes. I, I could be wrong. That's what I know. About well, it. a few of the scenes yeah. were really outrageous, even on air, and that was uh, that was kind of clear in some of the documentary I, know, I saw. I know that uh, Drake Bell is that his name? Drake Bell yeah, he, made he, accusations. He uh, said he was actually abused mm -hmm. by one of the guys. Yeah, like, significantly abused. abused. Yeah. Well, some of these young girls, uh, who was the uh, who's the singer who used to be on? There's a bunch of them. Well, anyway. The Selena Gomez? They, they had some, oh, who? Selena Gomez? No, it was someone else, um, kind of like in that age group, uh, who was involved in sexualized content promoting these programs. Oh, Ariana Grande? Maybe it was her. And I guess there had been a video of that out there. It was Ariana Grande. Really outrageous. And where were the adults? And this is a corporation. You know, where's the responsibility? The Justice Department or Los Angeles County officials and law enforcement should be investigating that corporation is for it, criminal activity based on what I saw. I heard this. I don't know if it's true. Is it true that Nick, Nick Kel Odio means I don't care for God? Did you hear that? That's what everyone that. started posting after the, uh, it says Latin, Nick Kel Odio is Latin for I don't care for God or something like that. Mm. Someone, I don't know, Google it, somebody. Nickelodeon is a old, old timey word, isn't it? Yeah, it was a jukebox. Yeah, put another you put nickel, a nickel in, in the Nickelodeon. But, but that's what they're, they're claiming now, it's like satanic or something, so I'm like, well, I don't know. They're, Nick they're L doing, what? Uh, N-I-C-K-E-L-O-D-E-O, -E -E I think, you Nickelodeon. <laughs> So they've got evidence of sexualization of children, the abuse of children on these corporate controlled sets, and our 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 friends online get obsessed with Satanism in the name as, as if that's the issue. The truth is terrible and they distract from the truth 
with the silly conspiracy theories. Yeah, well, to your point, um, Je- Jeanette McCurdy, who's an actress who was one on one of these shows, uh, who that was produced by Dan Schneider, who's got all these like pending out or like people are starting to say he was, you know, very inappropriate, especially with the female young female actresses. Uh, she wrote this book that went viral because it's called "I'm Glad My Mom Is Dead" and talks about her growing up in, um, you know, in Hollywood and what that experience is like. But she alluded to the experiences she had on set. She didn't come out. I, as far, from what I remember about it, she didn't come out and say these are the names. Who, these are who you should go after. But the book was so popular. It was you know on because the, the title is so flashy. Everyone heard about it. It. it it wasn't a secret. I mean, I think Amanda Bynes, who you know has very publicly gone through some mental health struggles, right. also made similar accusations. I mean, at a certain point, people have known for a long time, and why we decided now was the time to take them seriously. I don't know. Yeah, it's uh, one, but, I, I but don't Hannah, think... it's one thing to have those allegations out there. It's another thing to pull the thread and say, well, wh- but why where, did no where one were these the people? Thread? Yeah, they were out where there were for these a long people? Time. Yeah, no. why did no one pull the thread? Is my question. Yeah, yeah. And, and why now? Why why now does it feel okay to do this? Uh, is it because we as a culture have changed to say that we really don't trust Hollywood and we want to see the stuff come out? Like, is Hollywood losing influence in a way that makes them more vulnerable? I don't know. I don't know either. I was trying to find the uh, the Latin. You're brushing up on your Latin over yeah, there? Yeah, it, it doesn't have anything that is uh, definitive of it. Nickelodeon has nothing to do oh, with it. Oh, it's Satan Nick Kalo Deo. Dan or something like that, but <laughs> that's what it was. <clears throat> yeah, if you type into Google Translate, Nick Kalo Deo, it says, I don't care about God. Yeah. Hmm. In Latin. So that's a little know, congratulations. A little a little fun there. Yeah, it's not the well, same. Well, you know, uh yeah, that's where we're at. Let's uh let's jump to the next big story. It's good news for Donald Trump. Trump's net worth hit $6.5 billion, making him one of the world's 500 richest people. Oh, wow. You know, we've talked on this show about how we're so tuned into the news that if we bought stock based on the things we were reading, we'd probably get rich. And then we never do. And no matter how many times we like have, we did a, we did a bunch of segments like, wow, look at that. Dweck stock is so valuable. Trump's going to be worth $3 billion. And then we just forget about it five minutes later. And then today it jumps 35%, making Trump worth $6.5 billion. And I was like, why don't I just buy the stocks and the news stories that I'm reading every day? So that's what happened. Uh, uh, well, that's standard investment advice. You know, what items you use at your home all the time, yeah. buy stocks in it, because you can bet a lot of other people are doing it too. Mm-hmm. I'm just saying I should. Like, Are you on been... True Social? Do you use it? I mean, I'm on it. I don't, I don't use it though. I like it. I'm on it. And I'm not just saying I like it because it's a Trump site and all that. I, I think it's a good little site. Here, it, here. It, you know, you can say what you want within reason, and uh, it's it's good. Here's it's the good. Cr- here's the crazy thing about this, though. They're saying that most of the jump in price of Dweck is retail investors. It's it's regular people putting in a couple bucks here and there, right? Oh yeah, the AMC so, sort of crowd or something else like that. Well, just Trump supporters. Yeah. So now imagine the scenario where right before announcing they're running for president, an individual launches a company prepares a, spe- a SPAC, a special acquisition corporation, preparing to t- timing this perfectly with the year be- year of their election. And then tell all their supporters like, oh yeah, this, we're really, we're really excited for this acquisition. Then all of this, these people's supporters buy stock, spiking the price, giving Trump a massive net worth. He can then sell cash out and use that money for his campaign. It's an interesting way of indirectly fundraising for a campaign. Well, the fact that his name caused this spike, it highlights how significant his legal argument was uh, with the Angoran fight about the value of his brand, which was discounted by the Democrat politician judge who tried to destroy his company. This shows his brand obviously is worth something, uh, and it may be elevated enormously because of his run for the presidency but i suspect he'd be a billionaire or have a few extra billion no matter what he was doing sure, sure. With this program they're, they're saying uh on tuesday the ticker will show djt for the yeah for the for to, to the search <laughs> Final election year move. but that's what i'm saying so this means all of trump supporters right now are going to buy this stuff. they don't need to donate to trump because the purchase of a single share drives the value up so it's an interestingly, I don't, I don't, I don't know. It's a way to help them indirectly. Indirectly, but it's not just that. If they, if someone bought, uh, uh, if someone donated to Trump fifty bucks, he would have that fifty bucks. But if someone buys the share 
and millions of people are buying shares, it's driving the price higher and higher and higher. It may have a bigger impact. A yeah. much bigger impact. Trump, yeah. Trump could then offload a, a smaller portion of shares for yeah. a massive amount of money relative to what people actually bought shares for. And here's where it gets crazy. If Trump tells all, or he, I don't even think, he, I, don't, I don't know if he could do this or what, it, what it, how it would work. But Trump simply says, we're really excited. DJT is the new stock. It's going to skyrocket. We're, we're thinking it's going to go a lot of money. He's going to get non-supporters seeing a 35% increase in one day. People who don't even like Trump, don't care for Trump, are going to be like, I'm going to make money if I buy this. I might as well buy it. Then they are effectively lending their power to Trump, who can then, after six months, so just before the election, offload a bunch, I believe six months is the, is the standard for, for these special acquisition deals. He, he, can, can, he, can, he can get a waiver, though, from that, right? To right. offload yes. the stocks before yep. then. Yep. Yep. And, and none of his fans would actually complain about it. They'd say, please, yes, absolutely, Trump, do that. And also, I mean, we, we were talking about this earlier, but he could take out a loan against the stocks, yep. too. Because the values there, stock and stuff like I mean, that. That's what Musk does, right? Yeah. He kind of uses his loan as his yep. uh, his stock value as collateral for so all you, his so, spending. Yeah. So he could very easily come up with the, well, I don't know about very easily, but I assume that he could very easily come up with um, a loan to cover what he needs to, to cover in this and to to fund the rest of his campaign if he wanted to. I don't know if it's legal or not. I'm saying not saying that he should. I could be totally wrong yeah, about I, it. I think, so I don't know. But. I think <clears throat> there is no limit on self-funding of a campaign. So, I mean, theoretically, wow. he could. He could just be like, all right, I'll take out a loan against this stock and then right when, at the end when of did, the When did retail investment become legal? That was under Obama, right? With the, uh, was it the Jobs Act or something? Oh, I think it was legal before then. It's just a matter of no. I don't think so. You, you had to be an accredited investor. There, there were limits on how you would do it. Uh, you had to be an accredited investor with an income of at least two hundred fifty thousand dollars. No, no, I, I could be wrong. That's not for stocks, right? Obviously, I'm wrong on that one. That's for uh, direct investment into a startup or something like that. Yeah, this. there may be different rules for th like IPOs right. and things like that. Right. I think right. this is just the ubiquity of apps making it very easy yeah. and accessible for the average person. Now we're entering oh. this this new world. It might be that um, there was something passed that allowed um, because what Robinhood and stuff, you're not actually purchasing the stock. Right. You're they own the stock and you're purchasing. That's why you can purchase a small piece of it. Yeah. So I think what you're thinking of is there was an act that made that legal. So go ahead, sorry. For, no, it was something like that. I know that I, m maybe you need specific brokerage accounts that operate like bank accounts. Now it's like a really simple app where you put money in, right. and yeah, you don't actually own the stock or something like this. But now where we are. Think about the fundraising potential for future presidential campaigns where you don't even need, you can tell somebody before you even run, be like, you know, you didn't wow. get a donate to a campaign, buy stock in their company on the public market using one of these apps. And then later on, they could sell against that to anyone who wants it. And you get to keep that piece of the company. You keep your value. It might encourage more businessmen to enter politics. You know, Think, the reason Trump is... Part of, one of the reasons he's successful is because he has a demonstrated record of success in business that people mm -hmm. value, and you're seeing that here. So other businessmen may say, hmm, there may be something here for me to pursue as well. Part of me is, is surprised that they haven't already come up with uh, some kind of cryptocurrency to do that. They did. Oh, well, I, I, there I, was. I, I there already was a, D, a DJT currency, I'm pretty no, sure. No, no, no. I'm talking No, no, FJB. FJB. I, I, FJB. Because uh, the, the oh well, like a Donald Trump crypto, you mean? Well, I'm not not particularly a Donald Trump. It's the because the concept that he's talking about, you can purchase the you could purchase the cryptocurrency, which is funding the candidates' candidacy is is the thought process. And then if if the candidate wins, the you know in theory the cryptocurrency would become worth more. People could you know I don't know that there would be what other function they would have. But um, what what you're talking about with the Donald Trump stuff is he was doing NFTs and he was calling them trading cards. But they were, so, yeah. but he was calling them trading cards so that way boomers would understand what they were because yeah. a boomer has no idea. He's always been good at marketing. <laughs> yeah, exactly. This guy could boomers sell yeah, he orange did. coin or MAGA coin he or sold whatever he makes. Yeah, he sold, and, I sold all of them. And because they were, you know, they're, because they're NFTs, they're non fungible. So each one is individually different from the others because of the picture in it and blah, blah, blah. But it was pretty smart marketing. marketing imagine, way. imagine this 2028 election, every Democrat Republican candidate is the majority shareholder in a company that is about to be merged into a special uh, purpose acquisition corporation. And the platform they get from the national campaign cycle, they tell their supporters, we're really excited for the launch of our company. So, you know, take a look on your own as like, let's say you were a mayor of a small town. You ain't going to sell any shares in your stupid little company. You're on a presidential election cycle in a primary or whatever. It's going to boost you substantially. 
and then you don't care if you win or lose. You are going to get access to a base that you would never have gotten before to buy shares in your company indirectly. You don't got to tell them directly to do it. And that cranks the price of your shares up and then you cash out once the campaign's over. Well, the, I guarantee you, if it's not already in the news stories tonight, the Biden administration, because I know they were sniffing around this whole deal, will launch an investigation into Trump world for being successful. Letitia James or people of her uh, political, um, you know, her allies politically in state attorney general's offices will also launch investigations. So this is just going to be another magnet for the regime uh, to focus on in its effort to um, turn the country into a one party state. I think. I, I wonder if the strategy then for Trump would be to maximize these vectors, forcing the deep state and people of ill repute like Letitia James to continually go after Trump's businesses to the point where where it's absurd an absurdity. Just literally whatever he does, they make some ridiculous claim about overload the system. Yeah, I was thinking earlier today, I'm thinking, you know, if if there the next if there's a new Democrat administration, whether it be this this next term or two terms from now, I'm thinking Twitter's done. I'm thinking Musk is going to be thrown out of Twitter somehow by the government. And this kind of point and, and what happened up uh, against Trump in New York, I think that's a sign, a, a frightening sign as to what will happen to anyone who crosses the regime. Yep. And uh, they were willing to seize his company. They still could uh, destroy his ability to run for office all based on a fraud charge, uh, literally a charge that's based on a fraudulent interpretation or application. And that's only a state government law. too. That's yeah, not even and, the federal government. And the feds have invested, uh, I'm not blowing, you know, I'm not saying Elon Musk deserves the same sort of protection that, or, or protection that no one else gets. Uh, but what he's doing is so damaging uh, to the left's narratives yeah. and, and their plans for our country uh, he's he's going to have to go from their perspective, and I I think Twitter is going to end as uh, under the next Democrat administration. It, it I think that you're right. I think that the effect of a an, of an Elon Musk tweet cannot be overstated. I mean, a, any tweet that he he tweets it it's you know teens 20s 30 million people mm -hmm. you know see everything that he does his reach uh, is extremely broad. yeah it, it is dramatic and he is brutally critical of the regime uh and the the crit criticism are almost always uh have significant substance it's not frivolous it's not not just oh silly stuff um he's talking about the border which is probably the thing that people are most upset with the biden administration about yeah because and its impact on elections which yeah. is frightening to the left for yes that to which be exposed exactly the the uh the way that he articulated the consequences of illegal immigration for the electoral college for the congress itself for the the um for the makeup of Congress. I don't know that the average person is is aware of it, but it's certainly not at the top of their mind or the front of their mind. But when they hear Elon Musk talk about it or Elon Musk tweeted about it, they're like, oh yeah, that really does, doesn't it? That's how they figure out how Congress gets apportioned by the, the census. And the census doesn't ask if you're a citizen or not. And the people that are, you know, that are, that are Which, doing- when Donald Trump wanted to put make that a question. Everyone was like, that horrible racist yeah. wanting to know who's here legally but as the a citizen yeah, in the country. Yeah, and the thing is, the, the argument that you get, and I said this, I have said this previously on the, here on IRL, but like the argument you get is, the people that will that are illegal don't want to talk to people in government. They want they don't want to you know tell the truth and stuff. But the people that are doing the census are absolutely motivated to make sure that the people there know that they're not going to come back with the cops because the people that are doing the census want to know how many people there are there the real number because the more people the more funding the city's going to get or whatever locale that they're that's doing the uh, the actual census yeah, so yeah. the idea that the incentives are not all lined up for the people to to tell them if they're you know the number of people especially without the the fact that they're not going to ask if they're citizens that's ridiculous to say the incentives aren't there well, let's jump to the story from NBC News. We love NBC News. New York appeals court reduces Trump's bond in his civil fraud case to $175 million, a victory for the former president. They also gave him an additional 10 days to post the bond. I'm going to pause there and make sure we don't lose sight of what's happening. 
It is a small victory in this battle, and it is a major loss. Trump shouldn't have to pay any bond. That's he right. shouldn't have to give any money. That's and right. what, what the government here is pulling off is a big ask. They slam Trump with the most absurd amount of money and a fine in history. These bonds don't exist. Then when everyone's shocked, they go, okay, okay, fine. How about $175 million? And now we're supposed to go, oh, okay, great. Yes, you get him. Trump. Trump's winning. No, it should be $0. The charges are ridiculous. It was a summary judgment. The New York Times lied about this in their in their story about the 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 the, uh, uh, the bond. They wrote in a months long trial, the judge said this or that. No, 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 no. See, they're conflating what was actually going on. The judge ruled summarily that Trump committed right. fraud. And then, verdict, and, verdict first, evidence never. Yep. And then they did a different hearing on whether tr they, they said that it was fraud. Trump did commit fraud, but did he alter documents? Now we'll have a trial to make that determination and how much money he has to pay. So in that trial, by giving the summary judgment, Trump was not allowed to say he did not commit fraud and his his lenders were not allowed to say that Trump did not commit fraud. Yeah, and Gorin had, a, as you say, a summary decision. And uh, this is an attempt by the political courts in New York. They are political, most... You know, and, you're typically a judge there because you've been a selected or elected as a Democrat uh, for the most part. And this is an attempt to kind of pull back a little bit because of the public outrage. You're right. It is uh, not exactly the sort of victory we would want in light of the abuse of Trump, uh, but it is a major slap at Angoran and Letitia James who were willing to seize a man's private property yeah. Based on the alleg you know, based on this four hundred and fifty four billion four hundred and forty whatever the number was, a half a billion dollars. And and the court just said not, in addition to that, you're not seizing anything. But Trump has uh New York Times estimates three hundred and fifty million dollars cash on hand personally. And then I think his ca his presidential campaign is what between like like around fifty million or something, forty right. something. Right. To take a hundred and seventy five million dollars off out of the table. I know. Right. I so know. So I don't want to fall into that trap where we're like, yes, no, no, no. They they intentionally threw out a number they knew would get struck down and reduced to a massive number that would de be deemed accessible. And what's the basis uh, for this number? What, what, yeah, exactly. I mean, what, what is it? Does it sound better than four hundred and sixty-four million? Is that yep. the, is that the legal standard? They're making it up as they go along. They're trying to keep Trump off the ballot, out of the election, and uh, this is this isn't even about clean elections. The left has now decided. They don't want elections. Yep. And when you try to jail your number one candidate or remove his name from the ballot, that's something Putin would recognize, the uh, the dictator in China would recognize, and it's going on up in New York City. Now, there's going to be the Bragg trial, the, the, the crazy trial over the Stormy Daniels stuff, that's going to be in three weeks. Yeah. God, that's actually going to... Well, Lakeisha James' office, after this, this you know victory so to speak was came out there her office released a statement saying well you know trump is still being held accountable for for their crimes you know you know she's not even that upset about it which should tell you that this is really not a victory for trump the like, and the process is okay. a punishment too yeah the yeah. Only, the only way this is a victory is if there was some kind of slap down of Letitia james so badly and possibly charges against her for for you know fraudulently prosecuting a you know prosecuting mm -hmm. um i think that's the only way where you could be like that's a victory because if, if there isn't consequences for this kind of corruption then it's only saying hey the corruption is actually acceptable yeah. the, the the level of corruption maybe we went a little bit overboard but it's still fine yeah. that we have a summary judgment and we tried to take the property of of uh you know an american citizen who has clearly not been found guilty yeah. uh through no, any conventional means but what are, what's the likelihood that Letitia james would ever face zero. even an ethics inquiry in zero why are zero. why are no conservatives no republicans doing anything comparable uh, there should be well uh, certainly, uh, the Bidens could be subject to state criminal investigations under the new rules. And uh, what really frustrates me is the Republican-controlled House had a chance to give a haircut to people like Letitia James or Bragg, defund the Smith investigation, uh, target funding for Fulton County, and say, if you're violating the civil rights of Donald Trump and other Americans for political purposes and for election interference, you're not going to do it 
with any federal money directly or indirectly, and we're going to curtail that. They didn't care. They just fully fund the corruption that's going on right now. I'm tired of it. I'm tired of it. And, and I, you know, I appreciate there are some good conservatives on the Hill and, and, uh, but I think they're often just oblivious to the damage this is doing to our Republic. Yes. We, we, I, I think we need state level Republicans in, uh, governor's office, uh, AGs, attorneys general, or, uh, prosecutors to just go after, uh, Biden or any of these other individuals in a comparable way. I can only see the strategy here being let them make Trump the victim. And the, and the Republicans don't want to come off as like what the Democrats are. Give a tit for tat. The next honest president should direct the Justice Department to criminally investigate this whole group of prosecutors yep. for abusing their power to violate the civil rights and interfere with our elections under the color of law. Yes. Yeah, Agreed. That, that's the only, that is, like I said, that's the only way to get the message to other prosecutors that are politically motivated that this isn't going to be tolerated. We have to have a government that doesn't tolerate that this kind of stuff. Now, whether or not this is actually going to happen, I, I mean, I, I don't believe that it's going to happen. But if we want to see a return to normalcy in the United States, the way that you hear people talk about all the time, well, the very first thing is the justice system has to work properly. That means when you commit a crime, you get prosecuted. If you've committed a violent crime, they take you off the streets. If you've committed no crime, then you don't get prosecuted. That's the normal Normal, that's what we should that is that is not too much to expect from a justice department or from a, from a justice system and if you don't get that from your justice system justice system then you need to revamp it but all ours needs is to get the ideologues out of positions of authority take away their power to prosecute people for political reasons and take away their ability to create uh conditions in which they can fabricate uh, uh charges to 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 put people under, you know, it, yeah. it's it. And until that happens, we're not going to trust our justice system and a low trust society is a bad society. Yeah, it's really bad. I mean, this is, I, I think you're right. The next honest president should act on the other hand, in between then how much damage is done by people not doing anything to sort of slow this process down. I think, I mean, Letitia James definitely is the lead on this, but there are a lot of AGs who are ideologically driven. She just happens to control sort of the most influential, uh, left-leaning state in the, in this sense. Well, I, I think we've got a rising communist revolution going on in the United States. Yep. Yeah, are, the Democrats were talking about communists, no, but they are certainly taking their approach where the rule of law doesn't apply to my political opponents. We can casually try to jail them without consequence. They're communists. We, we, well, I, the point being, if it walks like a duck, <laughs> right, <laughs> but go. but that that's the sort of thing we're facing, right? Yeah. And so they try to threaten Supreme Court justices. They're destroying our our sovereignty through the border invasion. And, Antifa's violence, their riots and stuff. That is unquestionably a left leaning militia that is out to terrorize the population. They're planning to overturn the election if Trump wins, not because yeah. there's fraud, not because there was a problem in the way the administration uh, the, uh, the elections were administered but because they don't think Trump should be president. So they want to overturn the election. They're planning that. And under the DOJ new rules, that's a conspiracy to commit a crime and engage in sedition. I, what else do we need to say that we've got a political movement in this country that opposes America? It's not unconstitutional. It's this anti-constitutional approach. It's very dangerous. And and I tell you, uh, Republicans in the House who, who kind of took you know, uh, basically ignored and have been AWOL on these issues. Uh, the base is very upset with them. And I don't know what's going to happen in November. It wouldn't surprise me if they lost completely, even if Trump won. I want to give a shout out to Netflix. Jack Posobiec brought this up last week. Three body problem. Have you uh, seen any of that? Yeah, so, the, especially that, the first, the, it's worth watching just for the first scene to see what we're, what we're dealing with. I'll tell you this. Uh, I give the show a C plus C plus. I watched every episode. Very slow. Too much interpersonal drama. Opening scene. <laughs> too much dialogue. <laughs> well, there's not enough story. I know. I'm just joking. Like, you know, I don't want to spoil any of the show, but I'll give you a general example when it's like, there's a secret agent and he's been captured by the villain and you're like, oh man, what's going to happen next? And then it cuts to a guy and a woman being like, how was your day? 
<laughs> I don't know. I stubbed my toe, and I'm like, oh, uh, next, next, next. But the opening scene. The, well, you're not spoiling most, it. Give it, a, you know, talk about what the scene yeah, is. Yeah, the opening scene is the, is the Chinese uh, culture revolution where they've got a physics professor in a dunce cap, and they're, they're beating him, telling him to reject science as they all scream and wave the red books. And he, he got to see it. He's got to see it. The we, wife comes out. And she's like, thank you, thank you, youth. The, through the revolution, I've realized that science is all wrong. And they're cheering for her. For, wow. For context for people that haven't seen it, they are literally questioning him for teaching Einstein's theory of relativity. And I've said this before on, on the podcast, and this drives it home. It, the communists have a total different understanding and worldview. And this isn't just like the way that they look at things that that you're used to seeing every day it is a basic fundamental difference they don't believe that you can be in contact with the re with reality the same way that we can they believe that if you speak certain words it's like it's, it's like they believe magic they believe that words have power to the point where they can speak things into existence which is represented by the de the demand that you call a trans woman a woman because to them the words have power they don't believe in in overarching narratives because they want to be able to s select a narrative that gives them a position of power in whatever context it is so science and things that are that are fundamental and unchanging things like the speed of light and and the relativity that like the ideas and relativity yeah, so and stuff those kind of things are rejected by a western construct yeah, right exactly they're western constructs and, and that's we, why that's why we, like syncoism was a thing. and we mock it right too often we mock it they don't see it as funny no it's perfectly consistent within their worldview and that's why they're immune to our mocking and criticism largely i'm they, not to say we don't mock it and criticize it but uh, they, wanna, they're not, they're don't not trivialized by it at all. I want to give a minor spoiler alert warning. In the next 30 seconds, there will be a minor spoiler for the show, Three Body Problem, because I need to, I want to make a point about the writing, which is really, really good. So I'm going to say one more time. Uh, there's a viral clip going around. It's all over X because, I mean, this is Netflix. Right. That's showing, it's like their hot new show. Right when you log into Netflix, there's this big banner. It's like Three Body Problem which is a reference to uh, like three gravitational bodies and being able to uh, not being able to track them. It's a math problem, I guess. So right when you start the show, I'm like getting ready for bed last week after uh, Jack Posobiec mentioned it. And he mentioned that they depicted the culture revolution. He was, they actually actually did it, which is crazy for a company to do. And so I'm getting ready for bed. And normally it's like, you know, turn the light off, turn the TV on, watch for like half an hour or whatever, go to the bathroom. I just stood there right in the middle of my room, staring at the TV and my girlfriend's like, what are, you, what, are you, what are you doing? And I was like, whoa, whoa, watch. Holy, it was a, it was like instantly, I was just like, wow, it's terrifying. It's now I'll give you a quick spoiler for those that don't want to hear it. It's not a spoiler of the whole show, general premise point, because if you read a synopsis of the show, this is probably spoiled for you already anyway. So it's a, a woman who watches the very opening scene. They kill her father for being a physicist they beat him to death because he refuses to accept the revolution right she becomes a political dissident and then this the, the the story okay this is like they tell you this right away but it is a spoiler they're working on communicating with extraterrestrials and she makes contact and and wants to be conquered so the general premise of the show is brilliant a woman who was a victim of the culture revolution and these communist revolutionaries who believe we're going to destroy the old world and kill everybody because we are morally right. She immediately adopts the exact same ideology. That's the premise. It's 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 such well, a great and and it shows you it's still Netflix Netflix, <laughs> Netflix film in the end because they're sympathetic to that approach. Oh, she saw all these terrible things that are going on in the world in China. She reads Rachel Carson's uh, Silent Spring, which was some left-wing polemic that said all of uh, the environment was going to collapse within three years. And it was like written in 1968. So obviously that wasn't true. And so she uses <laughs> that as an excuse to push for the extermination of humanity. So, yeah, 
I don't want to. I don't want to get too much too much into the spoilers though. Well, we'll, we'll, yeah, well, you know, it's after two episodes, you know what's going to happen. Right, right. We're not. <laughs> we're, we're describing basically the first episode. They they lay it all out for you, but uh, I think I think first two episodes. It th- there's a lot of plot. Yeah, holes. I haven't watched the past the lot two of, episodes. A lot yeah. of plot holes, but the the political writing I do like. But a lot of plot holes. Let's jump to this next story. Daily Mail reports Governor Ron DeSantis signs bill banning children under the age of fourteen from using social media it would require 14 and 15 year olds to obtain parental consent to have accounts i agree what say you panel uh it's they're 14 years old their parents make the decisions i'm not like i'm i think it's fine i think it's weird that the internet became this place where because they decided 12 was the age you could make your own profile therefore parents shouldn't be involved when kids made a profile at 12 like that seems bizarre to me i don't know where the age came from except for maybe i do right uh <laughs> except for maybe i Bro, do except for maybe we <laughs> all know what's this. going on here we had we had goatsy we had <laughs> lemon party <laughs> we had meat spin and anybody who's been on the internet for a long time knows exactly what those horrible things are and even knowing those things, I, th- I think I pa- that passed through all these eyes. So. Oh yeah, <laughs> knowing these things, these people who made these companies were like, "We think thirteen is a good age for the internet." Mm-hmm. Yeah, okay. We've talked about it amongst ourselves, and based on our judgment, we think that we should have thirteen-year-olds online. Eighteen. It, I, I think that like the. I think parents should be empowered to be involved in their children's lives, and I think the internet is no different, right? In, in some ways, I think the internet got marketed to so many people it's just this this place where there's information and silly videos and that's obviously not true so they shouldn't have accounts on it seems to me on x they should not have accounts on facebook i don't think there's any way uh, a minor can interact in a way that can be policed even with parental permission uh so i you know can, i just don't see how that would work didn't you need a did, dot did, edu we, email to make a Facebook way back in the day because it was like specifically not, for not, college. I could be wrong on this. Maybe, maybe you're right. Like when it first uh, started because it was can, about uh, networking was among like, college students. Right. At least then yeah. you're over 18. Can we address the fact that Twitter's minimum age is 13 and they allow porn? Yep, yep. But why is it still like this? I thought Elon Musk took over. There there should not be, like the, so the fact that the, the state of Florida has passed a, passed legislation, you know, for Florida, that's going to be that's going to be probably minimally effective at doing anything. Um, it really comes down to the parents, honestly. These kind of things. This is like, you know, what time should your kids go to bed? Questions. This is make, making sure that your kids. This is making sure your kids are, are taking care of the hide their own hygiene kind of things, or, or they're you're teaching them how to take care of their own hygiene kind of things. This is this is basic parent stuff. And if you're not like doing this then you're dropping the ball as a parent i'm sorry if it upsets you but that's the truth there are certain things that you are responsible for by being a parent yeah. and being a parent means you're responsible for your kid and, and then, that means what your kid's doing and just because your kid can have a conversation with you doesn't mean your kid is an adult and you don't want to be your kid's friend you want to be your kid's a parent so grow up millennials you guys are awful <laughs> so I'm wondering how easy it would be for a child to bypass these requirements in order to get an account. And I think that's one of the challenges. I mean, of course. Well, and different sure, states sure, have but... proposed different ways around this. Like some of them, you needed ex- express written content from Look, the parents. Sometimes everybody knows that like the, the, the people in, in uh, the people that have kids that are that are working at these social media companies, they have flip phones. They all have flip phones. Yeah. Their kids aren't allowed on these platforms. And. Kids would find their dad's magazines. Yep. You know what I mean? But you don't open the door for them. Mm -hmm. There's like a certain age where maybe you talk to your kids. You don't leave them in the kid's room. You don't hand them to your kid. Here you go, kid. Like, I'll get you a new one every month. No, no, no. They go into the the 7-Eleven. And uh, I don't know if they still do this. I don't think 7-Eleven has the magazine rack anymore, do they? I don't think it has. They don't. No, I don't. But they used to have. They used to have like. And it's it's like they'd have the, the dirty magazines in the rack but they'd be in black plastic so you couldn't see them. You just see like the top or whatever. Mm-hmm. Yet we don't let kids go in and just buy these things. How, how have we opened the door on social media for all this stuff? Again, I think it's because when the internet came out, people just did not understand what was what what was being opened up. And it, it seemed like it was a necessity before people really understood the implications of having access to, you know, everything the internet has both good and evil and also allowing the internet into your home which is like inviting strangers well, it's, to your it, home. you know it's satan 
That's why we have it on the internet. <laughs> it, uh, you know, I, and I don't use this term lightly. These are demonic forces trying to destroy our children, and let's be blunt about it. There's nothing about. It, there's nothing intellectual about it. It is a dark, evil movement within our country trying to target sexual activity at our kids, trying to justify adult interaction with children and of a sexual nature absolutely demonic it's it's all justifiable by in queer theory that uh, this is a, a topic that keeps coming up because everything horrible is in is essentially in queer theory the the theory goes that the idea of childhood innocence or the idea of innocence at all right. must be thrown out a false construct because it's yeah. a it's a construct there is no innocence and you can see it when you read queer theory papers by there's one by uh, little miss hot mess she says that even that's, that's her name i didn't make it up i'm not lying here <laughs> um she says that kids are kinky or or you know they say that kids are kinky um gail i think it's gail rubin is wrote thinking sex and that is full of absolute disgusting things she talks about intergenerational uh intergenerational relationships um foucault who's a, a marxist postmodernist marxist uh he was working to get the french government to roll back the age of consent and at the time it was 15 so th this <laughs> yeah it's Jeez. disgusting and, and it goes back to all he was like not enough yeah and even herbert marcuse who i've talked about a bunch of times he's a, a disgusting leftist slime ball that was basically writing papers justifying anything the left wants to do he wrote this book called eros and civilization which is full of just just deviance and it's yeah. something that the left does because the left wants to break down rules about purity because it doesn't believe in the rules that anyone well, makes well i wonder if the if the i'm pretty sure under an actual communist regime, you deviate, you degenerate, they gulag you and beat you to death. They're, the issue is breaking the family destroys the working order, which allows them to take over. Yes. So that they want no competitor to their their cadres. Yes. The theory. The family, education, religion. So the stuff that you guys are talking about, that is the method of allowing the communists to take power that's how they they break down the family they break down the structures that that are basically the pillars of your society they break those down and that allows them access to power and then they'll go ahead and and start trying to literally tear your society apart because they don't want to they, the, specifically the queer theorists because they don't believe in rules they literally just say well, we don't any rules are 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 to be cast off and as as some kind of oppression yeah you know? so they say that uh the law puts the onus on social media companies to enforce the ban and failure to do so could result in damages of anywhere between ten thousand and fifty thousand dollars i say good i say good civil too. Is, so do parents have a right to sue if there's a uh they don't fail or who who enforces it is it civilly enforced by parents i don't know seems like enforced by the state yeah a fine for uh, per infraction and I hope uh, Twitter is uh, Twitter. I should say X is the first to say, yeah, OK, we shouldn't have uh, 15 year olds, 14. I don't, I don't even know if I agree with the 14 to 15 year olds, to be, to be honest, unless Elon Musk. It's really, really simple. Anybody, uh, any adult content posted on the site should be auto blurred unless you're right. You're logged in and confirmed to be the right age. And I mean, send in your ID for verification. What good comes from having anyone under the age of 18 on these sites? Nothing. And and the, and the funny joke is, on the internet, no one knows you're 14. Right. Now, the original joke is like, no one knows you're a golden retriever or something like this. But how many people are right now, 40-year-old men, 50-year-old men, 35-year-old men and women, and they're arguing with a 13-year-old? And they're, they're, they're posing something like, the progress, progressive tax system is an oppressive machine, and we should switch to a flat tax. And they get a response, you're an idiot, you have no idea what you're talking about. They start debating, and it's some 12-year-old being like, the hell is this? Yeah, it happens all the time. Yeah. Being trolled. Yep, fourteen year old has no idea. So there's a, there's a funny. But smart enough to troll you though. Yeah. There's a, there's a funny meme, and it, it was someone saying, "Oh, my politics. It's the opposite of whoever I'm trolling right now." Yeah. <laughs> uh, so welcome to the internet. There, there's the the there's something that uh, 
Oh, I just there was a point that I that I wanted to make that I've just lost right off as soon as I was about to talk. So sorry. It's it's all the rules being torn away from you. You yeah, can't no. make your you're, points. You're, no, I mean I think the weirdest thing about social media has always been that it it desires access to your children. It oh. desires access to minors. And it's like inviting a stranger in your home. I mean, think of Snapchat. Snapchat is incredibly popular among teenagers. What is Snapchat? It's a messaging app where you talk to someone and it disappears. Like, yeah. I'm sorry, that's crazy. Can you imagine if you were like talking to a 45 year old guy and they were like, Phil, can I just on my own privately send disappearing messages to your, I don't know, 12 year old nephew? You'd be like, get out of here, you creep. So the, the point that I wanted to make is like me and Tom remember when like, when the internet w was first, you know, became a thing that you could actually get at access to at your home everyone knew you didn't give any information out to anyone on the internet you didn't talk you like everything was secret and you don't let anyone find out where you live and you're not nowadays people like kids can't keep their butthole off the internet sure but, <laughs> you but know? again i think of all of like influencer culture which relies on people oversharing for yeah. attention and engagement in the pseudo yeah. relationship they have with people I mean, this was the number one choice of career uh, among among Gen Z, right? They all want to be influencers because yeah. they think it'll be great. Well, and, you know, live your dreams, I guess. But also, this is maybe not something you should start doing until you're 18. Let's let's talk about moral degeneracy. We have this story from the Daily Mail. Drea de Mateo, is that how you pronounce it? Sure. Blasts conservative commentator Tim Pool after he called the Soprano star a hooker for joining OnlyFans, quote, Stop taking shots at struggling single moms. I object to this. I'm not a conservative. <laughs> you should sue uh, them for defamation. That's an insult to conservatives. Uh, but they do say Tim Pool is one of the biggest conservative influencers in the U.S. Okay, well, I, I, okay. it's like, do I get mad about I'm not a conservative. Influencer is a weird word, isn't it? It is, right? It is. So uh, let me tell you guys a story. If you, I did a segment on it earlier. But uh, actually, I'll just show you the tweet because they have it here. Um, I tweeted, all right, all right, there's a Barstool sports story. Drea De Mateo made more in one month on OnlyFans than on The Sopranos. I responded, women deciding to be hookers instead of having jobs is an arc I didn't expect feminism to take. Now, to be completely honest, I thought that was actually kind of a benign tweet. I did not actually think I was tweeting anything largely inflammatory, though it did end up getting 4.5 million views. I guess I don't know the weight of my own tweet sometimes. My point was not to insult Drea in any way. I don't care what she does. And I didn't realize hooker was an insult. It's quite literally what they're doing on OnlyFans. I'm like, you are taking requests from men to post sexually suggestive content in exchange for money. Money. I'm like, just because we've changed the medium by which women can sell sex from the brothel to now over mm -hmm. the phone, yeah. doesn't mean you're not a sex worker. And this is the funny thing. Everyone agrees they're sex workers. And I'm like, so they're hookers. I... I I'm from Chicago. We just said hooker. You have a very inclusive view of the word hooker, you know. I just thought it was a general term for a woman who sold, who engaged in sexual activity for money. But yo, they got real mad. Well, they got you know. real mad. And so now <laughs> you've got like, there's like this woman with like a million followers on Instagram and she's attacking me and Drea made this like, Big long winded post. I wonder if it's uh, if it's it's like we could we watched it before the show. Here we go. Look at this. And we just well, all we could was laugh at the length that. of the post. It's like she don't says even, that. Don't I, even read it. She says I'm fake news. I'm holier than thou. I'm talking about not things that don't matter to this country. Uh, I'm a shill. You know, and I and she's like, I hope you never end up in a place like me, you know, where you have no choice but to become a hooker or whatever. She <laughs> no I, choice. No choices. And I'm just like, wait, you know, she, I was so homeless. She's recognizing she's a hooker. She didn't say hooker. I'm saying. hooker. Oh, OK. She said end up in a place like me where you, where you choose to do this. OK. And I'm just like, <laughs> she says, Tim Fool. Not only did I not know the great Tim Pool was an expert on feminism and hookers. Uh, yes, I didn't realize like I, I'm, I'm going to go back to what I said, because I think this is an extremely important point. I don't be I believe if you go back to the 70s, uh, uh, late 60s, and tell all these women, the end goal of women in the workplace will be to get them to all quit and all become sex workers. They'd be like, what? No, I, they just disgusting. But there's story after story of, I was a nurse, but I make more money doing OnlyFans. I was a star on The Sopranos. I make more money doing OnlyFans. And I'm like, I didn't expect feminism to switch to just sell your bodies online to men for money. And we've talked about it. This is the end of women in the workplace for a few years until men start using AI to make fake women and do it better than women, which is already happening. 
So that's where we're at now. And uh, I, I don't know. I think. Look, they wanted the right to work and this is what they did with it. It's awful. I hate it, it is, here. It is straight up like this is 100 percent women doing what women want. And then I don't want to do that. I don't, I don't, I'm not saying, that I'm not saying you. I'm not saying you individuals doing what indivi individual women doing what individual women want. And then they don't like the way that someone else characterizes it or but, sees but, it or, work, or well, works. Well, and she's it. acting like this and, was her only option. I know. That's what bothers me. She's like, I, I have no choices, no choices. I couldn't, you know, have gotten my real estate licensing a job. I couldn't have, you know, worked a, a uh, medium to job, whatever. Like I couldn't have worked in fast food. This was the only thing available to me. That's a, just a lie. Like that's there's, not and, true. And, 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 I just want to. This is the whole point. Is is breaking? Is is just breaking through like the facade that is held up? Though this is the Lizzo's beautiful. You remind me of Lizzo, and and right, someone right. gets upset about that meme. That's exactly what's going on here. It's sex work is real work, and this person's a sex worker, and then you, you call, call them the wrong name. It. Right? How dare and you call me what I'm doing? And then you're using the wrong. So then it's just about the fact that it is a term that is looked at as a, a derogatory term. That's uh, all. Here, it imagine, is. imagine if the Homeland Security Agency investigated OnlyFans the way they do P Diddy. Oh right, because there was one woman on OnlyFans Underage. who the, the day she turned 18 at midnight had a whole bunch of posts appear, and everyone went. That means those posts were made when she was not 18, and that was the point. So I'll, I'll read some of this. She says, here's another mean-spirited, judgment, holier-than-thou mouthpiece who didn't even bother to research his subject before firing off his dis disdain. Mean -spirited. He sounds exactly like the full-blown lefties he lambasts. Okay, oh, yeah. uh, here's what I think. I, 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 I pulled Twitter. Uh, I said, do you think it's fair to call women who sell sexually suggestive photos on OnlyFans hookers? 84.3% said yes, with 34,865 votes. I also asked a few other questions. Uh, so apparently when Drea announced her OnlyFans, she did it with a <coughs> nude photo. According to numerous news reports, she posts nude photos. And typically, I guess it's like sexually suggestive, but fully clothed. And that's, I'm like, I, 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 look. You're just, we're, we're, all we're arguing now is degrees of being a hooker, okay? You're, you're, you're a hooker and everyone's arguing, yeah, 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 but if you only are selling the, like if men are requesting photos and you send them to them, you're not engaging in the physical activity. So you, you are hooking, but is it enough to call, okay, now we're just arguing degrees. What's the, what's the point of this? I think the outrage here among so many of these women shows, similar to what uh, Phil's saying, it's the hypocrisy. It's where they say things like, Dylan Mulvaney is beautiful. And you go, you're so beautiful. You look just like Dylan Mulvaney. And then they cry. And, and then we've seen a bunch of posts where like, a guy was like, I made my aunt cry because she's like this liberal. And I said, she looks like a trans woman. She got really upset by it. Like they claim to be like, they're beautiful. But if you call them that, they get angry. They claim to be like, I had to do this because, you know, and, and I'll go on podcasts and I'll tell everyone I'm doing it. And then I, I say something semi-tepid like i didn't realize feminism was going to result in women choosing to be hookers and she loses her mind because they deep down hate what they do they regret doing it they're ashamed of it now many of them are victims of abuse uh it's just terrible and and only fans and people saying so and so has an only fan account the media just describes it as like a normal thing to do which is another sign of the decline of our civilization. I, like, can yeah, I, can we I, can should I, treat OnlyFans like it's weird. Can I read this one thing real quick? So this other woman, I guess it's not a real housewife, says, Tim, Tim Pool can F all the way off for calling my girl Drea, my queen Drea, a hooker. Not that there's anything wrong with being a hooker. <laughs> I mean... <laughs> But that's not what she is. And how dare you call some, her something in a defamatory way for having an OnlyFans account, you dickless mother effer. <laughs> I'm I'm just sitting here being like I never once had a mean thing about her. Well, I was ta I was talking about this uh, before the show started. This clip between Norm Macdonald talking to Jerry Seinfeld, <laughs> and talking about Kojak, and uh, McDonald's imitating Kojak, saying his daughter, you know, the daughter who was killed, was a prostitute, and the mother said, "Well, you know, she was a good girl," and he imitates Kojak. He was a she was a hooker. Yeah, you know, she, she was a hooker. But with a heart of gold, you know? You know. <laughs> <laughs> I just, I, like, this whole argument is so strange to me, personally, because, like, maybe you should just be like, yeah, Tim, I'm a hooker, and I'm proud of it. Like, why can't you just embrace what you're doing if well, it's fine? The... But obviously, you don't think it is. That's... And also, maybe it's not okay, because this is a terrible way 
to uh, treat w- yourself and to treat the women around Look, you, it's, right? It's digital it's sex trafficking. It's there, digital it sex trafficking, and you're you are going on OnlyFans and making a profile. Right, like this is weird. I don't the, like it. And again, what bothers me the most is she acted like she had no other options. I want to push back on the digital sex trafficking because this is Him, not this is not the same OnlyFans. thing as sex trafficking. That's because that's a crime. Like sex trafficking is a crime that some people should go to jail for. What she's doing is not a crime. People can condemn it. Mm. People, you can dislike it. You can you can condemn it. That's fine. You don't have to like it, but it's not a crime. Well, read the federal obscenity statutes. So okay, you might no. think otherwise. All right, no, no, no. Okay, listen. First of all, I hate the government, so screw that goddamn obscenity <laughs> thing. Okay, and second of all, like sincerely, it's like. I'm not like I'm the kind of libertarian guy. I think it's it's okay if people want to go ahead and do this kind of stuff. But society should not lie to itself about what it does and does not approve of. And the reaction that people are giving is why is because society is lying to itself. If you actually are okay with sex workers, which personally I am, like I don't have a problem with it. But and if you are okay with it, then it's okay. But if you aren't okay with it, it's okay to say no. I don't think this is okay. But the fact that the fact that people are lying about it is why there's this this cognitive dissonance in the reaction so, that people are having. So if I tweeted, "Women quitting their jobs to begin sex work is an arc I didn't expect feminism to take," you think they would not have gotten mad? I do think that there would. I think there would have been less of a reaction. I do. I do think some people would have been upset. But I do honestly think that if had you used the term sex worker, I think that there would have been less reaction they because it wouldn't be. They should reclaim the term hooker. I, it Come is. On, I'm not. I'm not debating that at all. I'm just saying that the way that you that the way that you you articulate stuff does matter, and they're getting upset because they're perceiving it as an attack because the the term hooker has for as long as we have at least as long as i've been alive been associated with a negative connotation well i guess my pushback tim is that you shouldn't be surprised that the feminists or at least the radical extremist leftists who call themselves feminists uh because they've been embracing this concept of sex work yeah. for years we're not allowed to use the you word know, prostitute look I, I, sex work in Bi- with the Biden administration <clears throat> and human trafficking they don't talk about prostitution I, anymore I, they talk about it in a in a, in a neutral term in a neutral way that suggests that in some circumstances they endorse uh, the abuse of every human being involved in that process, uh, prostitution. Yeah. So, so I think I figured it out. Uh, 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 Phil, what if I said <laughs> that she was the director of sexual uh, gratification relief at her independent company? Do you think she would be upset if I said that? No. <laughs> maybe, maybe I should give her a, a slide a, a boss, slide a, a boss bitch in there, and you and she you get a pat let's, on the let, back. Let's 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 do what George Carlin described when he was. I don't know if you've ever seen that bit about political correctness, yeah. where he says we used to call it shell shock, now we call it post traumatic stress disorder. We have to make it longer and more verbose. And I I think I don't know if he mentions invalid and retard. The things that people used to say that were considered normal descriptive terms became offensive for no reason. That's where we are now. Well, I am not letting this like leftist sex positive, you know, movement take the word hooker from me. <laughs> well, I, when I was a kid, we said hooker. We're taking we, it, it back. It, it wasn't an insult. It was just a thing. And well, it was it was like there were hookers there. And like that was a, a noun to describe a person. You can't get mad at a word because it describes you. That's it. Sorry. Have a nice day. Well, and I think you have to accept that. Being on OnlyFans is the equivalent to sex work. We should stop pretending it's like, I'm a fun influencer. I just happen to be behind a paywall. Like, no. Most people are engaged in sex work. Just accept it. And if you're engaged in sex work, you're probably a hooker. And, And we're laughing about her response. She's obviously a woman in crisis. We should be praying for her. For sure. But also. That she's in this situation and feels the need to respond, not necessarily you, but to respond to whatever crisis she's in by by uh, uh, abusing herself through uh, this sex trafficking film. That's a very dignified <laughs> and compassionate response, but I will say- Your judicial watch, Tom, you're killing me. <laughs> it does I, bother I, I, me I am, that she is saying that this is like her only options. I mean, it's the same thing with the girls who are like, I make more money on OnlyFans than being a nurse, but you're not 
you don't have to make more money on all things. You could be a nurse. <laughs> right. yeah, you could choose yeah. to just You could be do a nurse. something else. You're saying that this is the work I want to do because I find it either gratifying or easy or it pays big bucks and that's what I want to well, do. But she, she, makes, she makes this point where she's saying like, I hope you never end up like I am. And I was like, I was homeless several times. Not well, once did I resort to being a, a, a male escort. Or I, yeah, I also hope home. you never get on OnlyFans, it, 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 Tim. The, the big yeah. deal to me, me and I'm going to drive you even further crazy, it's like this normalization of vice. So we've got old yes. fans, and we spent decades trying to keep gambling out of sports. Now gambling has taken over sports in a way that is just extraordinary to me that I, I just can't believe, given where we used to be in terms of keeping you know, the Pete Rose scandal and everything. Now you know, gambling has a seat at the table in every major sports league in the country. Uh, this player out in Los Angeles has gotten caught up in it. It's this normalization of vice. No good come, can come from it. And it, the fact that there's widespread OnlyFans activity online, widespread gambling online, is a is a sign of dysfunction on, both legally and morally. Not even not even online. We've talked about this quite a bit. Where we are right now in the tri-state, Maryland, Virginia, West Virginia. Let's let's quit. Uh, okay, on the in Mar Maryland's got uh, uh, on the uh, near the East Coast, you've got. Horseshoe Baltimore Casino, you've got Maryland Live Casino, you've got MGM Casino, you've got Hollywood Paraville Casino, you've got uh, uh, Rocky Gap, and so I think that's five casinos in the state of Maryland. Now let's talk about the surrounding areas, which are still uh, uh, within within two or so hours driving from where we are. You've got those five. Then you've got the Delaware Racetrack, which is only like half an hour outside of Baltimore. Then you've got... Uh, uh, Harrisburg, Hollywood, York, Hollywood, that's eight. Then you've got Hollywood, Charlestown. There are nine physical casinos within a couple hours. Then we can add, if you want to go to Pittsburgh, which is two and a half to three hours. Now you've got Pittsburgh Live and you've got, uh, I believe you've got, I think you've got a Hollywood. I could be wrong, but let's just say 10, 10 casinos. Then on your way, heading up north towards Pittsburgh, about two hours from here, you also have Lady Luck. There are 11 or 12 casinos within two or so hours of driving from where we are right now. 12. And you're not even counting Atlantic City. Oh, Atlantic City, I think, is three and a half hours or four hours driving. Yeah. So it's a bit out there, but that's a day trip. You leave Saturday morning, you spend the night, you leave Sunday night, you're back home, couple out at Atlantic City. Now, I can tolerate Atlantic City in terms of the argument of vice. We have Vegas, we have Atlantic City. Yeah, you kept them local. You, they were vacation and, and spots. Specific, you right. went to, for your vacation, to engage in in your vices. You drink, you party, you gamble. But then you go back and you say, okay, we're going to get back to being productive. Now it's just everywhere. That's right. And it's all, tar and interestingly, it's all targeted at young men. Both vices we're talking about. Yep. The whole, uh, you know, the gambling online operations. It's all, the marketing seems to me directed at young men. And OnlyFans, like, you know, I guess well, it's a broad marketing campaign. Someone super chatted that I should tweet the sex work version. Well, I, I tweeted, I, I quoted the exact same story and I wrote, women deciding to engage in sexual activity for strangers is an arc I didn't expect feminism to lead to. I hope that clears things up. Although I do believe they'll still get very, very angry that I referred to them as engaging in sexual activity for strangers, which is a fact. Yeah. Everyone can cry some more and then we'll all move on with our lives. Mm, boy. <laughs> Oh, where are these people's fathers? I'm sorry. This is how, ridiculous. How, God help America. How did we get to this point where we have become just a vice? Like, like the, 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 all of these casinos popping up really is shocking. I think it's because we're a society that has lacks community and lacks religion, right? Like there is no expectation that you would live to a high standard. In fact, we're told always live and let live it's fine don't be judgmental everything's okay there's no uh collective morals that say hey there are things we're against and we don't like them and we don't want to encourage them i like liberty i think you should be able to do things that you want to do on the other hand i think that we as a society would say like hey if you're on only fans we're going to judge you for it we think you know, that's not a good i think move. that i didn't 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 the owner try to like shut down porn on only fans like they started getting scared at how much porn was popping up and they tried to shut it down, but then the, like, invest we the investors revolted. They yeah. were like, we're rich. I know they've Turn tried Turn the to. world to the ground. Moral, degeneracy, make, moral degeneracy, uh, degeneracy makes us money. Yeah, yeah. <clears throat> yeah, I think moral, moral degeneracy does profit and that's ultimately won out. I mean, that's one of the reasons I think we're sort of this, this identity-less culture, which is that the dollar reigns everything and saying like, hey, 
like again i go back to this example of the nurses that are like i make more money on OnlyFans. like yes but you pay with your dignity homie like is this the price that you are willing to say it's it's better to make more money i'd rather be rich than to be able to look at myself in the eye look if i tweeted this and they responded with yeah that's kind of crazy right well uh, that, that'd be the end of it and it's a failure of christian leadership in america i mean because america it used to be that the christian moral view in these topics meant that laws reflected that. Christianity and, doesn't and, have the balls to defend and, itself. And, and, and Christians in this country have been attacked and belittled by the culture, made fun of for even thinking about these issues in terms of morality, and they don't even engage anymore. And you know, Cause, I, cause, I, I'm, in the, I'm in the movement, I know a lot of Christian evangelicals, they've been always very concerned about the gambling, but the money just overwhelmed and overwashed them, and a lot of, and too many Christians are embarrassed to say, this is wrong, should be illegal for all sorts of reasons, and including moral reasons. And that is a valid basis for law. I think the left can do all sorts of laws based on their morality. Conservatives aren't allowed to. The, the, the idea that society must celebrate uh, things like sex work or like vice, right? So, so celebrating drinking, celebrating doing drugs, celebrating uh, gambling, celebrating... Uh, you know, all that kind of stuff is a terrible, terrible idea. There is nothing wrong with having a society that says, or it, it should be desirable to have a society that says families are good, right? Families with a mother and a father and kids, that's good because that's the foundation of a society. So the resources should be poured into making those things more attractive, right? Well, that's what, a, that's what, if there's, if the government is going to have, if the government is going to cheerlead for anyone, if the government's going to cheerlead for anyone, it should, it should not be, be cheerleading for the LGBT group, uh, LGBT lobby, just because that group of people are not making more people. Right. right. They're not making more of the society. So if the government's going to have an opinion, it should be the the traditional family opinion. Right. It shouldn't be the fringe edge of society. We need to center and make the, well, the, the thing that I, to, to be all held my up. libertarian friends. I'm sorry. The government can't be neutral in areas of morality. I, I, that's it what I'm, it I'm saying. I'm it saying this. Work. I'm saying I'm I, I'm a, I'm in agreement with you. Yeah. I don't think that we should be tossing people in jail for using drugs and, and ruining lives because it tends to ruin lives way more than it does right. to but I debate. Think we should debate have a, is about the sanction and what steps But I think we should taken. have exactly. a strong we, enough social fabric that says like there are things we don't accept. Like the idea that like a man would abandon his family, right? Yes. Like I think that would be bad. I agree, but they, it shouldn't. It just so long as it doesn't turn into throwing people in jail because that only adds more problems. You right. add maybe, police but if and maybe it have, means throwing people in jail. But if you don't want a government <laughs> sex solution. Sex traffickers. I, again, you're talking about an existing crime, Tom. Gamblers. I'm not saying that we should not <laughs> not enforce existing laws and none of what I'm talking about is sex trafficking. Stop it. Like I said, your judicial watch. Come on. But I think the thing is, if you have a government, if you don't want a government punishment, if you don't want it to be like, if you are, if you abandon your family, you could go to jail or whatever, which there were laws in states like that, right? Yes. If you don't want that, then you have to have some kind of reinforcement somewhere and it has to be social. Which means right you now. You have to have a strong cultural idea of what we think is acceptable culture, and what's not acceptable. Yes, and right. above law and politics, yes. 100% always and always will 100%. Be. And that's why the problem the that we're, that. the problems that they we're seeing do. are because they of, wait, 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 they absolutely do. That's all they do. The, the reason why Christians are ha, have lost so much ground is because they gave culture to the left. Yeah. The left then made it uncool and unacceptable to be Christian. I guess my, my point is for the left, politics rules everything. Yes. Power politics. And rules they put everything. politics into the cultural spaces and, and, right, right. to change what was allowed because they know that you can pass a law saying you can't eat cheeseburgers on Sunday. And then they make a bunch of movies of people eating cheeseburgers on Sunday. And then everyone's like, I eat cheeseburgers on Sunday. And then all of a sudden, the moral values of whatever it may be don't matter because no cop is willing to enforce the law anymore. We have tons of laws in the books today that are unenforceable. Like the, the, the famous blue laws, the joke one we like to reference is women can't go skydiving on Sunday in Florida, which I think is not a real law or whatever. It's a joke, but it, I think it might have been a real law at some point. What cop is going to land, uh, is, is going to stand near the landing point for us for skydivers, wait for the woman to land and then go, ma'am, you're under arrest. It's never going to happen. Why? It's culturally unacceptable. The judge would say you're insane. There are, there are still areas of Chicago that are under prohibition. 
And people don't even know this because everybody drinks and nothing is happening because no cop is going to walk into a bar and be like prohibition. Yes, this this neighborhood is under. They just don't even that doesn't even happen. Yeah. And and although we should also recognize to Phil's point, the widespread availability of alcohol is it destroys parts of our society and you know we just willingly accept it as if there's nothing we can do about it it's just like the rain you and know, that's not it's never the case it should never be the case i think this trope of uh like the stodgy dad who doesn't want to dance and the kids who want to go dance is how you you is is, is part of this leftist indoctrination i mean there has to be a kevin bacon footloose well, the left Link says to everything. The movie, there. the movie makes the parents out to be bad for saying no right, dancing. Right. But the the moral of the story is rigid social order, bad. Go f have fun and do whatever you want. But that's just one degree. It results in uh, we have a great super chat where someone said, "You know, you're an idiocracy when you drive down a highway and half the billboards are weed gambling and lawyers." <laughs> well, you know, I've been I, one thing I've noted on the metro in D.C. Uh, and I do take public transportation. Uh, certainly recently is the amount of pot in the air everyone's smoking pot on the trains and uh it occurred to me that if they were smoking cigarettes we probably have federal troops on the train but you light up fire on a train for mm -hmm. pot we're afraid to enforce the law well, you only it, it's so one crazy. By smoking cigarettes. oh i've seen a guy get thrown thrown to the ground for eating a hot dog <laughs> on, a, on a bus and the people started getting mad how dare you but when it comes to weed everyone's attitude is Weed's not so bad. We shouldn't put people in jail for it. Like, no, no, no. Smoking, smoking, dude. I don't care what you're doing. Don't smoke or eat on the train or the bus. Those are the rules. In D.C., H Street, which was the le uh, the D.C. government spent bil millions of dollars, tens of millions of dollars trying to rehabilitate since it was burned down during the riots, um, you know, after Martin Luther King and such, uh, now is, is destitute. And uh, it's famous for having, I think, about 20 or so uh marijuana dispensaries mm. on the strip and they wonder why it's attracted the wrong crowd see that's the challenge with marijuana legalization because i don't believe it should be illegal but decriminalization leads to a massive industry of people engaging in bad behavior you know and at my i kind of run hot and cold on it i just don't see how legalizing it works it just can't work and it will never work well, what do you mean by working in the sense of uh, not producing societal effects oh, that require negative. its prohibition. Yeah. That ultimately require its prohibition. I mean, we, we A, the health effects of, of marijuana are much more significant than have previously been acknowledged. The type of marijuana now widely available is still is much more powerful. And plus, the, the black market has actually benefited from the legalization of marijuana because other drugs that aren't legalized uh, have increased in value. Yep. And they're but still involved day, in the marijuana market anyway. Every day another grain is added to, uh, another grain of sand is added to the heap of moral degeneracy in this country. And all the, you got to, all the libertarians are saying things like, why shouldn't we be allowed to gamble? Why shouldn't we be allowed to smoke pot? There is no happy medium. There is no point of total freedom. There is no, we found the balancing point between freedom, security, and moral and morality it's would just, you, it doesn't exist would you want to live on the strip in las vegas would you ever been in the strip on las vegas it is one of the grossest displays of human behavior and vice you'll ever see i don't i don't know if i agree with that like what, what are you what are you referring to uh the pushing drugs uh the, that's true. the sex work the monty the uh it, it, it's, monty. it's gross it's gross yeah fair point no, no one wants to live in the middle of Las Vegas. They may want to work to so live around Las Vegas. Tourism. But who wants to live in a who wants to live in a gambling house? The I the thing that that kind of surprises me or or that I can't wrap my head around Vegas is the fact that it's tr they try to make it a more of a family experience while still having. I mean, it's not as seedy as it was in the seventies, sure, uh, or or early eighties, but. Still, it's it, the the attraction to Las Vegas is gambling, partying, drinking, and and I suppose shows. But really, like, you shouldn't be bringing your kids to Las Vegas. Mm -hmm. You know, I mean, you want to bring your kids to Disney. That's that's one thing. 
I'm not, maybe not now. Do you think but, it's just that Las Vegas doesn't want to miss out on like, you know, the families? Well, it's corporations. Through, you know what I mean? It's, like, big, it's big corporations. Those are still potential customers and clients. So yep. we have to have some place for them in every city, even if the city is generally marketing all of its entertainments towards, you know, adults over 21, let's say. Yeah. I mean, the tr the attraction in Vegas is still largely for adults. It's not like there's chill and things that are designed specifically for children but they do try to make the you make it at least family enough so that way parents <laughs> that are questionable parents will bring their kids to vegas while they party i guess you well know? there's 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 uh the the pool area and yeah. there's areas for kids atlantic city actually turned they, uh, someone turned one of the casinos into an arcade mm. so now the family can bring the kids to atlantic city and which I still yeah. think is probably not good. Like the, uh, you shouldn't be bringing your kids to Vegas. Bring your kids somewhere else. Like, and and there's again, I'm not, I'm, I'm, I have no problem with people that go to Vegas and party. Like, I'm, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm not necessarily opposed to adult gambling. I'm not, I'm not saying that, but it's, I, 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 expand, no, no, no. expanding it so that it becomes like something you. We have well, 12 course, casinos to choose from. Uh, if we leave Saturday in the morning, we're like, oh, look, at one of the 12 casinos, that's bad. Yeah, the, Especially the, for impoverished areas. The, the, it is something no, that... No, no. MGM National Harbor, the highest grossing casino outside of Vegas, uh, uh, beating even Atlantic City, it's is a, insane. It's, yeah, it's, uh, it's $900 million dollars just DC south of for D.C. for sure for that one, but you are also talking about 10 Maryland others Live, that are DC. in other areas that I would just say, like, it is not great for impoverished areas Pro to have casinos right like but but that's the only impoverished the population. only impoverished area is probably charlestown churches can where there still is a run. casino churches. and that's the one out of 12. so uh you could argue baltimore i guess that's in yeah. downtown well i, gotta, I know there's a ton in wheeling wheeling's impoverished in west virginia i mean it's not well that, well west virginia is impoverished yeah and so west virginia has five casinos virginia and so are parts of ohio no they may I have mean, four now i'm just saying like it's well, the government's there involved in gambling operations. Look the, I'll, I'll tell you. I'll tell you about mm -hmm. West Virginia. The problem with West Virginia is the hot spots. Hot spots. I don't know if everyone. What do you What do you mean by that? So it's a common thing in West Virginia. They are basically mini casinos. You, it's you, you'll go to a building that's maybe like 400 square feet. There's uh, uh, typically you'll find a woman behind the counter selling beer, and it's just like a refrigerator with a stack of Coronas, and then there's 10 slot machines, and people go in there and they dump their paychecks and leave. Not a good thing for the state. I suppose the state of West Virginia is happy because it generates tax revenue for them. But having hot spots all over the state, yeah. it is not a good thing. What do you do? Do you say you're not allowed? Look, morally, I think you can do whatever you want with your money. You, if it's your money, if if I want to, if I want to make a wager with Phil about you know a, a coin flip, that's our money to choose how we spend it and what we spend it on. It's insane to me that the government would be like, no, you're not allowed to spend your money on I agree. a game. Ch churches should still be able to run bingos. But then you end up with, in in any given area, there's like, within, I mean, we talk about casinos. You go to West Virginia and there's going to be like 12 hot spots, they call them, just surrounding you in every possible direction. Yeah. And these are mini miniature casinos. You go in, they, some of them are nice. I got to be honest. There's one we went to. It was really, really nice. They had like a really nice logo and it was like an Ace of Spades. It was called like Ace of Cates or something like that. And you go in, it's a cafe. And then there's a row, a nice carpeted area with a row of slot machines. And I'm like, the cafe part's nice. I, You, you know where they get away with this stuff is because they say, what's the difference between a, a, an instant scratcher and a pull on a slot machine? Nothing. So how can you ban one, not the other? The issue is the speed at which you can crank a slot machine by slamming the button over and over again, and people will just burn through money like crazy. Mm. I, I'm not saying people shouldn't be allowed to do it. I'm just saying our society is in moral decay because people want this, to do it. To re recognize the addictive nature and dangerous nature of it, and it's like got to be controlled we, and we strictly about, regulated. Look, and, we, we, and, um, get the government out of it. We'll have less of it, that's for sure. I mean, the thing, well, that, I, I agree about that, but the... The, the situation really is we need society to stop, you know, glamorizing things that are vices. And we need society to start valorizing what you would consider wholesome behavior. Valorize people that, that start families. You want to uh, uplift, you know, people that have three, four kids. And, and that should be something that the government if it's going again if it's going to have a position it should be a pro life position it should not be a pro uh pro unique family or or you know individualist mm -hmm. perspective it should be something that is pro family and pro community 
and and if you do that then you'll do you'll go a long way in cutting off the incentives for things like only fans and the things like gambling and and other vices you, you need shame i you do you do and, and but that but shame is not the government so if it's right. if it's if it's that's social yeah that's society social, that says which is these exact, are, things are good these things are bad which like, is exactly what so, i'm talking about you well, know in reference to the only fans things a lot of people are responding saying shame the women on only fans and i'm like i did not even do that <laughs> you know what i mean like the, i didn't even have that line i'm just pointing it out but i do think a society needs to have a healthy amount of shame to to shame people who do things that are bad but they should be allowed to do if they really want to there should just be a rec like a rec recognizing you are doing something that we disagree like we think is bad you can do it though for them too i mean you're not ha i don't you know shame versus not telling this actress what she's doing is not a good thing that well, has to be something we I have to do. Was, I didn't even say there was anything wrong with it. Well, yeah, but well, all yeah. she was doing it. Well, you suggested strongly <laughs> by using a negative word. So, I didn't think Hooker was negative. So, so even, yeah, even if that's true, your intent. But, but it kind of is, though. But if you're, you would if, recognize if, Hooker as a kind of a word that I don't. I, I, if I, I, I called someone a Hooker. But sex workers that are the it, same category and they I claim know, but, they like it. Well, so I'm just call, like, I don't know, Women refer to each other as, I'm going to curse out here, but like women refer to each other as bitches all the time in a, like a friendly way. Like, why don't they just start calling each other? But it's not, it's not that way. like, I don't, what's the difference between sex worker and hooker? Yo, listen, when it comes to about like. One has a moral, uh, one has a moral uh, negativity around it. Yeah, no, well, you're no, not, you're no, not gonna, there's you're not. not that's not me. because if you listen, listen, go listen to Sexy Red's newest single. Absolutely, right? Because all never. all she does, they all they do is talk about being like she, they're not. literally talking about selling their bodies. I they're the, they're sex workers, and Sexy Red is a is a hot new rapper. So the idea have, that this woman have to look her up. I'm sorry. Well, well me. I mean, Phil's right, right. on current culture. I think she's <laughs> awesome and hilarious. Chats. We're going to go to Super Chats. If you haven't but already, would you kindly me. smash that like button? Subscribe to this year YouTube channel. Share the show with your friends. It's the best way to help the channel grow. And become a member by going to TimCast.com and clicking Join Us so you can hang out in the Discord server, which is like a 24-7 chat room. And in the server, once you figure it out, you, go to the, you follow the instructions on how to sign up. You can submit questions to actually call into the show and talk to us. You have to be a member for at least six months at the $10 level or... If you want to jump the line, it's 25 bucks a month. And then after six months, you could always lower your thing, your, your membership back down. And we'll, you know, it, we, we do everything manually because we're not a we're super big company. The reason we do this is to kind of screen because there are a bunch of weirdos and haters who try to come in and try and waste our time. So, but we're going to read Super Chats now. We got Clint Torres says, howdy, people. Mitchell Black says, howdy, Clint. And Waffle says, howdy, Clinton Mitchell. <laughs> I, I strongly encourage everyone to send ever. send two dollars every time you'd like to say howdy to each other. All right. Shane Wilder says, Tim, I want to commend you on your eloquently worded discourse this morning on X about digital prostitutes. I've been saying this for a while. <laughs> I agree. And I did I did a long segment on it talking about how like is prostitutes negative or positive? What, is, what word is that? Is that prostitutes neutral? neutral? Depends on who says it. So, so, the, say so it. the issue is historically, uh, hooker. morally, hookers, one and all. being a prostitute, being a hooker, is frowned upon. So th the reason why someone would say the words have a negative connotation is because the act itself is viewed negatively. They say sex worker because they're trying to isolate what they're doing, which is prostitution and hooking, from the historical words which people associate in a bad way. It is postmodernist word definition garbage trying to shift someone's perspective based on changing the words but it describes the exact same thing it, it, you're an only fans you're a sex worker sex workers are hookers that's just what they are the, the word the worker part actually is a connotation to the proletariat so like I they're know. they're members of the so workers common. you could just tell it's yeah, exactly. right yeah. worker. Exactly. jose alfredo diaz says christ is king practice espanol <laughs> tim cristo es rey is that how you say it? I've, Tybo that, says that, that one I've, I've passed over that whole crisis campaign. Christ is king Jesus is second coming is going to be a real bloodbath if you are not saved I mean <laughs> oh, I, I believe that's literally in the Bible though isn't it uh, Jason Dixon says Tim Diddy was caught being gay and doing crimes <laughs> that's right here we go Nee says Christ is king look up Moloch ritual July 1933 interesting all right all right what are we looking at Daniel Domasek says, hey, Tim, if you search Stargate Atlantis first strike nuke, it's a great clip to show the Merv. Oh, cool. Stargate Atlantis. I didn't watch Atlantis. I watched SG-1. That was an awesome show. You guys ever watch uh, SG-1? 
Oh. I've seen it. It's on this. Uh, it's on. Uh, it's on cable again. Yeah, yeah. They have yeah. it on Comet. Jason Dixon says, "Over here, waiting for Tim to defend Diddy with all the police corruption and horrible abuse of power." I know my rights. This Friday, we're having a couple cops on. Cool. And we're gonna we're gonna talk with active duty police officers. So that'll be fun. And these were guys. I guess they literally showed up to one of our staffers' house. Like, hey. Like Tim should talk to us, and we were like, "He should. You're co you're correct. Come on the show." Ask him about Ashley Babbitt's shooting. Yeah, I mean, there's there's a lot of there's a lot of issues with the uh, there's there's a lot of issues that I think aren't necessarily about the police when we talk about uh, police. It's about human nature and what humans do when confronted with these circumstances. And historically, what we see is no matter who you are, there is a tendency. Not every human does this, but when it comes to authoritarianism. The people in military law enforcement say, I will I will march in lockstep with the machine committing the atrocities because I don't want to be on the other side of that stick. All right. King Apollyon says DJT to the moon tomorrow. That's right. There's going to be a stock called DJT. That is that is absurd. You just couldn't write the 2024 love election. Yep. You know Who what knows? I mean? You just so couldn't. Good. Ian Morrison says, Tim, Drea De Mateo was blacklisted for refusing the vax. She's pretty anti-woke and went to OnlyFans just to interact with fans. I don't believe she does anything explicit and nudity. She'd be a good guest. Well, my friend, she probably would be a good guest, but you're incorrect. Uh, according to her friend on Instagram, she launched it with a nude photo on Instagram. And according to uh, even the story we were reading, I can't show the photos they posted. They are not. The, uh, one of the articles has explicit, has, has outright nudity. But she's like got her legs crossed and she's covering herself. And it says it's on her OnlyFans. So I don't, whatever. She's like, Tim didn't do his research. I, I looked all this stuff up. I just didn't know if it was fair to say like some people might not re refer to that as hooking or whatever. And uh, some of the photos are just straight up pictures of her boobs in a bikini. And I'm like, you're just posting sexually suggestive content for money. Like that's literally what you're doing. You, you announce it with a nude. And one of the photos is her and another woman with their hands against the wall, pushing their butts out in their underwear. And I'm like, Okay, like, dude, come on. All we're doing is arguing the degrees at which you are engaged in sexual activity for money. So uh, I, 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 I am sorry, Ian. No, she, she does have those photos. I can't show those photos on, on YouTube. If we were to actually show those and be like, here's what she's doing, we would get deranked and demonetized for adult content and possibly the show could be age restricted to 18 plus. That's what might happen. And so, okay, uh -oh. call whatever you want. Well, we didn't show the, we didn't show the photos. Do you want to restrict it to 18 plus given our prior conversation? Talking about, I don't, I don't think there's any issue with talking about the news. No, just asking. I mean, when I was a kid, I'd turn on Fox News and they talk about rapists and murderers and blood splattered all over the street. So the news is the news. Showing untoward, you know, degenerate behaviors and stuff, I think should be adult only. But this I don't think- probably an R-rated discussion sometimes, don't you think? I think when it comes to an issue of like, we are discussing the news- then we do have people email saying, please don't swear. Sometimes my kids are around. But that's for a parent to decide if they want their kids to hear about news and politics. We're like, you know, talking about what they're, what they're engaging. So it's a they're news show. It. There should be no age restriction. I understand. But parental parents should be uh, watching over it. My issue with Twitter is not that we should. The, the only reason I agree with this and is signing this bill is because the companies aren't doing anything to enforce the law the way they legally are required to do already. So Twitter X should any adult content, any, anyone who posts in any adult content, it should be blurred out. You can't see it. The only way to see it is if you're verified. That's the that's the f content that Section 230 specifically authorizes yeah. the removal of. Yep, yep. Yeah, uh, it is tough with the news, though, because there is a fine line between where parents will decide and whether or not someone's posting or, or, or doing untoward things. But I think the news is, is the hard limit. And, and news organizations typically have the discretion of like, there's certain things we won't say or won't show for the sake of, you right. know, public decency. Right. Let's go. Let's grab another super chat. William Kelly says, diddle you this, diddle you that. Who's afraid of the diddler's bat? That's the set that comes to mind hearing the diddler. Well, okay. Jacob Pauly says, did P. Diddy do it, Phil? It depends on what the nation of d definition of did is. Anyway, Phil for president of Congress or uh, Phil for president or Congress. Please, oh. Phil, you can just yell, scream at them during every bill or meeting and vote no in everything. Please. No. <laughs> that means yes. He wants he wants to be in Congress. You can see it in his eyes, but he's being humble. What district would you run? 
What district would you? I would actively uh, railroad my campaign. There's no way I would ever, ever, ever. I would never serve in Congress. G says, bro, Tulsi is going to be VP. She basically confirmed it last Friday. Well, I know that uh, she's on the short list, apparently, right? For Trump's VP pick. Mm -hmm. I think that would be great. I don't know that she is the right choice. I don't know. Everyone's like, who should he pick? I'm like, man, I really don't know. But if he did pick Tulsi, I'd be very happy. I think she's a good choice. What do you think, Tom? Who, who, I don't no? think so. I don't think she's pro-life. She's not. So I think it would be a bad choice. But the, the point is to get voters that Trump can't already reach. So if we're talking about a post-liberal, the Democrats have gone too far candidate who is appealing to the likes of Elon Musk and, and you know people who are not necessarily fully informed, I think Tulsi Gabbard does, casts a wide net on that regard. I think Republicans tend to lose elections. I'm putting on my political analyst hat. Because they don't get enough Republicans out voting. I agree. And conservatives voting. So he needs to ensure that everyone who's a part of the coalition has a reason to come and vote for him and not want to suppress that coalition in any way. And I think having a pro-abortion <clears throat> candidate on, on his ticket would suppress the pro-life vote in a close election. I don't think it would. I, th- I mean, I, I think I th- it's possible you're right. I'm not. I, I'm just saying. I, I think Biden it's is politics, so. so who, who knows, right? It's true, but, yeah. but But I. I I would be cautious about, uh, and that's the trick for I for d- Trump is how how is it he kind of talks about abortion in a way uh, that makes uh, the full coalition comfortable. I do think it's uh, frustrating for me how many Republicans are refuse to articulate their moral positions out of fear that people don't agree with them, and I'm just kind of like, if you think people don't agree with you, then stop trying to to win power. I guess like the argument should be. I am right. And if only they heard the correct argument, they would agree with me. But if you genuinely think you could not ar- you could not present your idea to someone and, and they would agree with you, then you just know you're wrong. The issue of abortion, uh, particularly too many Republicans keep trying to dance this moderate ground instead of just coming out right, being like ban it all across the country, ban it all. And then arguing why they think it should be permanently banned in all circumstances. Seamus Coughlin has no problem saying that. He says, here's what I believe. Here's why I believe it. It should be banned completely in this country. And I, you know, you raise an interesting point. I, they might want to th- think about saying, I believe life begins at conception, and we should think of ways to pr- protect that life. And we're going to disagree, but we all agree that there's a life at issue here. And I think that's where most people are, and they'll debate whether to have it at six weeks, four weeks, or ban it entirely. If, but most Americans want restrictions on abortion. If they can I'm, get I'm not, that. I'm not yeah. trying to argue abortion right now. My no, point but, is but Republicans. Politically, I think you're right about being forthright on your views because people don't like people who aren't forthright in their views. And when they don't present, my position is abortion X, then regular people never hear the argument. How could someone actually agree with your argument if you don't give it to them? Well, pe- there, it is, there is the, the fact that the, people on the that people on the left and people that are pro-choice have spent decades, multiple decades, lying about what their position is. Their posi- they, they sold it as safe, legal, and rare, and it was never going to be birth control. It was only be, you know, for emergencies and et cetera, et cetera. That was what the, you know, essentially the conservatives or the moderates had agreed to, I guess. Not regular conservatives. That's what the moderates had agreed to in the 90s. It was safe, legal, and rare. And that's what, that's what essentially convinced enough people to say, well, okay, maybe. And then after that, it was all downhill. It was just, oh, shout your abortion. Let's have a party. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to have, I'm going to literally celebrate my fifth abortion. You get people behaving like that. And then, yeah. you know, you're just now, like, all right, well, you're ghouls. That, now it's a death cult. I mean, <clears> Vice <throat> President Harris, first vice president, first president or vice president to go and visit an abortion clinic and the clinic she uh, went and visited kills unborn babies up until nearly the six month of pregnancy and helps women kill them afterwards somewhere else this is where the left democrat party is abortion on demand through the entire nine months of pregnancy paid for with your tax dollars Uh, there's got to be restrictions we'll grab some more stanford says it's pronounced antigua there you go not Antigua, it's Antigua. Hmm. Grandstanding and hot dogging says I was double charged by your website for several months. I emailed the customer service team about it. They refunded me within a day or two. Great service. I'm so happy with their work that I want to give the money back. Buy them lunch on me, please. Will do. In fact, uh, we do that frequently. Last week we did lunch like four days out of the week. Basically, um, when if my girlfriend is not around, I'm either dipping bacon into cheese sauce or ordering food. 
We all know when Allison's gone because Tim That's will right. be like, "What do you get? For okay, lunch? food's coming today. It's great." Yeah, it was like I I ordered like this massive box of Chinese food, and so everyone's like, "Ah, oh, Allison must not be here." <laughs> Because Allison cooks real good food. Today we had, uh, I had ground turkey with cheese and onions, Cajun spice and white rice, like very healthy, tracking my macros. But mm -hmm. if she's not here, it's like. It's like Taco Bell's here, guys. We're yeah. Like, See ya, Allison. <laughs> well, there was, cause there Mexican was, pizza. There was the one day where it was like, what did you have for dinner? I was dipping bacon in cheese sauce. And it's like, oh, geez. It's like, yeah. It's like girl dinner, but it's Tim dinner. You got your protein, you got your dairy. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but so we do by lunch. And so especially every Friday, every Friday we do uh, sushi for everybody here at the uh, Cast Castle. And um, we are a couple weeks away from the new studio. Really excited. But I have news. We are postponing the April 6th event. It is not open to the public. It is our official launch party skate jam contest. Um, if you're a skateboarder and you have the skills to pay the bills or you know someone who does... And they would like their share of $35,000. The email is contest at booniesHQ.com. We're going to be inviting a small group of people who send us their skateboard demos and show that they have the certain skills for the contest. It is $10,000 first prize for the, the vert wall uh, drop-in. 11 feet of vert to a 5-foot transition, if you, know that, if you know what that means. But um, maybe many of you know people who are good at skateboarding who might consider the challenge. It's on our Instagram at Boonies HQ. We're moving it to April 20th because uh, we have there's a couple things we have to do. We have to uh, I don't want to say too much for security reasons, but the first, the most important thing is we're morons. And we didn't realize there's a big event called Tampa Pro on the same day. So a bunch of our pro skater friends were like, that's impossible. You'll never get anyone to come out. Like, I was like, oh, dude, I can't believe we did that. But uh, we're all, we also want to take the opportunity to set, set up some more stuff and uh, get some like emergency backups stuff installed and stuff. So I don't want to say too much. So I'm saying stuff a lot. But uh, yeah, contest at Boonies HQ. If you have the skills to pay the bills on a skateboard and uh, hey, we're not, we, don't, we just don't want a bunch of pros coming. We want, you know, everybody to get a chance, but we can only invite like five people. So it is what it is. Let's grab some more Super Jets. Piers Lort Phillips says DJT is good, but I would have gone with TDS to further rub the loonies noses in it. I think it's a really good idea, but I think the reason they're going with uh, DJT is because they want non-supporters to actually buy it. Think about this. Who will donate to Donald Trump? A supporter, a strong supporter. Even people who want to vote for him don't donate. What if there's regular people who want to get rich quick? They might end up buying several thousand dollars worth of DJT stock which will pump up the value because they think they're going to make money on it. Trump doesn't need their support. He needs their greed. Bushido says, Tim, I'm a former law enforcement officer. LEO aren't going to make a ruling on scene based on either party statements. Landlords need a writ of restitution from court. You realize, good sir, that what you're saying is if someone breaks into my house in the middle of the night with the intent of killing me, they need only put down the bed and calmly wait for the police to arrive and then say, I live here. And the cops are going to go, oh, I guess we can't remove the burglar. Burglar lives here. He said so. That's what's happening with squatters. Do you think we'll see a, a big push to change squatter laws in this country? Because I do feel well, like Florida's I've heard doing a, it. Right. Florida is. And I feel like that could be a lead for other countries. But it's a story I see in the news a lot more frequently. But I don't feel like I see the same legislative action. Well, certainly not in the progressive controlled jurisdictions. Uh, you know, rent control, they're going to. It would be the end of rent control once they got rid of squatters. Yep. I mean, what is rent control other than legalized squatting? Yeah. That's crazy. I knew somebody who lived in Santa Monica and their rent was like 500 bucks for this like two bedroom because they, they like had, it was just, I forgot how they do it, but they transfer the lease over somehow. Mm -hmm. Some woman had it since. Or they never say the who actually left and they always just keep paying the same rent there, i don't know how it works in california but someone was like i think it was like a woman who lived there for 30 years and so she would rent out one of the rooms and it was a couple hundred bucks and the whole place was only like 500 dollars. same thing in new york yeah <laughs> that's crazy and then what do you do who wants to own that building we were looking at buying a building in uh charlestown and then the person who owned like we were like okay we want to buy this we're going to open a business here and then the owner was like we've given a three-year lease to the tenant upstairs and i said see you later have a nice day i'm not buying your building like that's for that's in, like three, you that's don't want, nuts. you don't want to be a landlord. Oh, I don't want to be a landlord, but I have no problem if it was like we're gonna get like we'll we'll talk with the guy who lives here 
and ask him how long he needs, but we're buying the building. And, and they need to leave. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. like a year or like something. Like finish out your lease kind of thing. Yeah. And like, and I was like, and we'll help him move. And like, we don't want to throw someone out if they've been here for a while. But they're like, they're getting a three year lease. I'm like, I'm not buying your building. I'm like, I can't invest in this and build a business in it with some stranger living there for three years. Yeah. That's like, we can't do it. Yeah. And, that's, and that's fine. I'm like, if that's your terms, like by all means, it's your building. You do whatever you want with it. I, I got no beef. But I'm sure they would have preferred to sell it. Maybe they sold it. Whatever. Venus Sophia says, I bought 10 shares of DWAC in the first hour and day of trading. Looking forward to the merger. Plan on holding on to my shares for a very long time. I mean, these, these DJT shares are basically the Trump trading cards everybody wants. You know what I mean? It's like your share of Donald Trump himself. That's all Truth Social is. You know what I mean? It's like, why be on it? Well, that's Trump. If you want to follow Trump, that's the platform. What do we got? Rita Ho says, my great granddad owned land and was beaten to death by Red Guards in China. My granddad escaped, but he lost everyone. The book author is a supporter of the Communist Party and Uyghur genocide. He still lives in China. I believe the book, Three Body Problem, doesn't even mention the Cultural Revolution. I looked up the book. I could be wrong. And I think in the book, they don't mention the Cultural Revolution. It, it takes place in like 1979 or something where they discover aliens or something like that. The Netflix show decides to put it 10 years before. Uh, and then have it be the merciless communist murders that took place. Yeah, I'm trying to think where as as like the Chinese communist, uh, you know, struggle sessions, cultural revolution. Uh, it was uh, the last emperor had the, the uh, if you remember that, they had the emperor go through yeah. uh, in, a, in a sympathetic way, of course, to the communists. They forced the emperor to come to terms with his uh, pro-Japanese activities. What have we here? The dude abides, says Tim, as a fellow Illinoisian, the word is justified. Hookers be tripping. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. It was like hooker meant hooking. I don't know. That was the words. You know, it is funny that there's still regional terms. We mostly sound the same, like dialects are disappearing. Right. But there are still words like bubbler, curb, gym shoes. I, we, we say gym shoes in Chicago. I guess that's not a thing in a lot of places. They say sneakers or something like that. Right. Gym shoes. We said sneakers in New England growing up. Rose, I did. I don't know. What you know what a bubbler is? Yeah. Yeah. No, that, I don't it's know like a that. water fountain. But yeah. we, mm -hmm. I said water fountain in New England. I don't know about you. Yeah, water fountain. It's a fountain. Yeah, you have that. You call them bubblers? No, there are fountains in New England. And, but, but bubblers is Midwest, you, I think. No, bubblers is uh, like Cape Cod or something. Oh, was it? I I didn't know that. Yeah, let's let's uh let's double check check bubbler term. I don't really recall. I called it a fountain when I was growing up. Mm -hmm. Pretty sure. Uh, let's see. A bubbler is a drinking fountain in which the water is forced in a stream from a small vertical nozzle. Really? Mm -hmm. What is bubbler slang? I heard it was a uh, Boston Providence area. That's what it says. There <laughs> you go. I knew some people from Cape Cod and they said bubbler. Yeah. <laughs> and, uh, then there is pop. You guys yeah. say pop? So pop is like Chicago. Ohio, definitely. No, Midwest. we always say yeah. soda. Midwest. But it, New England I think soda, in, yeah. yeah, soda is New England, but then I think at the South, maybe it's Texas. There are certain regions where everything is a Coke. Yeah, so South Carolina, yep. everything's yeah. a Coke. Yeah. That, that was when I was growing up. My mom, my mom's from South Carolina, and when we go down there for the, the summer or to visit family and stuff, everything was a Coke. You would get an orange Coke. Yeah. <laughs> you get a Sprite Coke. Yeah, you can get a, yeah, I think, like I, what I kind know. of Coke do you want? Yeah, it was, yeah. It was a cherry yeah. Coke, Please which is me. a thing. But you could get that, an orange Coke, and you'd come back with like a Fanta. Mm -hmm. That happened know? to me when I was uh, I went to L.A. for a skateboarding trip, and it was me and this other dude from Chicago, and these two guys from I think uh, somewhere south. I don't know where. And so the one guy walks into the there's like a team manager, and he's like. He's like, hey, can I get a Coke? And he's like, I don't got any Coke. And he's like, oh, uh, yeah, you do. And he's like, I don't got any Coke, dude. And then I walked in and I was like, yo, can I get a pop? And he's like, what are you guys talking about? And then uh, I was like, I'm, I, I understand we say pop, we say soda. I was like, a soda. And he's like, you want a soda? Yeah, you can have whatever soda you want. And then the other guy was like, yeah, that's what I was asking. And he's like, you called it a Coke? And he's like, oh, we call it all Coke. And I was like, wow, this is trippy. Bring people from different parts of the country together and they can't speak English anymore. <laughs> As a good, it should be. Go regionalism. I think that's good for culture. I think it's great. Legama says, Tim, please double down and call her a hua, like you are from New Jersey. Hua. No, I always like Danny DeVito. Hoor. H-O-O-R. A hoor. I, I was not trying to insult her. I think you were insulting feminism, not her. I did. I wasn't insulting anybody. I was just like, and you know, someone said sex positive feminism, Tim. You didn't realize. I'm like, no, no, no I'm saying like, 
I didn't expect the like growing up as a kid when they talked about women having the right to work and all that stuff that the end result was going to be when I was an adult, they were going to be begging to be to be hookers like they desperately you, you made the you made the point perfectly, Hannah Claire. They're like, I make more money doing OnlyFans than I did as a nurse. And it's like, yes, but you could just be a nurse. You don't need to make that money. They're choosing to be prostitutes. Yeah. How yeah. much more? If it was like, oh, I make like 50 grand more. It's like, you really need that 50 grand? Hmm. Well, well, like apparently some of these stories are like they go from making three, like four or 5,000 a month to, you know, like 20,000 a month. And I believe them. Like, I'm sure yeah. there is a lot of money in it. It's just a question of like, is that worth the the cons here? Like your dignity could you look your your you know children in the eye when you get older like there is a cost that you are you are paying it just may not be financial as much more social i think a lot of women don't realize the uh the social stigma that comes along with it you hear a lot of a lot of women that are that are getting to the point where they don't want to do you know adult entertain anymore and they have a hard time you finding anyone that back, wants though. to well, be a fan, was the, a family with them or whatever you know oh, what P about D that politician whoa, 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 in, in, in virginia who didn't I am she looking win at this right now and i can't yep. find any confirmation really mm -hmm. what is that there was someone on on staff sent me saying that uh p diddy has been arrested the diddler has been it's caught all, it's, all, it's on I'm twitter not, yeah i don't see any confirmation i'm though. not seeing any confirmation the people magazine is reporting that he was maybe possibly but not confirmed on this plane but there is an old article from the New York Times, I think, from like 2001 of him getting arrested in Miami. And I think that might be confusing Oh, uh, okay. Yeah. Yes. Rumor circulating that Diddy was arrested, but don't know that's true. No confirmation. All right, everybody. If you haven't already, would you kindly smash that like button, subscribe to the channel, share the show with your friends, head over to TimCast.com, click join us to become a member and support our show directly. I'll say that a little bit slower for you. Head over to TimCast.com and click join us. The members only show will be starting in a few minutes. It's going to be fun, funny, and not so family friendly. So come hang out. You can follow the show at TimCast IRL. You can follow me personally at TimCast. Tom, do you want to shout anything out? Uh, JudicialWatch.org. JudicialWatchOneWord.org. If you like suing bad guys, you'll support Judicial Watch. All right. Uh, I'm Hannah Claire Rimmel. It's been really fun to be here tonight. I'm a writer for SCNR.com. That's Scanner News. You can follow all, all of our work at Timcast News on Instagram, Twitter. If you want to follow me, I'm on Instagram at Hannah. I'm on Instagram at HannahClaire.B. I'm on Twitter at HC Brimelow. Phil, it's so good to see you. I feel like it's been a while. It's good to see you too. You know, when you when I walked in, I saw you in the the furry suit. I thought that it was like an actual furry suit, like you were gonna throw up the, yep. the hood with like. I'm slowly turning into know. a stuffed animal. <laughs> That's me. I am uh, Phil that remains on Twix. I'm Phil that remains official on Instagram. The band is all that remains. You can follow us on Apple Music, Spotify, Pandora, Amazon Music, YouTube. You know the internet. And don't forget. The left lane is for crime. Uh, glad you're back, Phil. Uh, I am Surge.com. I'm ready to go to the after show when you are, Tim. We will see you all over at TimCast.com in a couple, uh, in about a minute. Thanks for hanging out.